Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about Naruto gets banished from Konoha after his failure to return Sasuke part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. The battle between Sasuke and Naruto had just ended, and Sasuke had decided not to kill the unconscious Jinchuriki, not that he would have succeeded with a guardian watching over him from a nearby mountain, and with Itachi and Kisum seeing the battle, just in case Sasuke would try to kill Naruto, since that would interfere with the Akatsuki's plans. As Sasuke left Kisum moved forward toward the fallen body of Naruto, having seen the opportunity to take the Nine Tails, without the need for a struggle during which Naruto without doubt, would release the Nine Tails. Kisum, stop our orders were to watch it's not time yet to take the nine tails Jinchurik, you saw how weak he is said Itachi, trying to stop Kisum from taking the boy's body without blowing his cover. Yes, I also saw his potential, Itachi he will one day surpass us in skill and power, and I don't want to get more hurt while we subdue him, so it is better that we do it now, well he is still this weak said Kisum with a decided tone, showing that only death would stop him from achieving his goal. If you say so but remember you will have all the responsibility if this goes wrong said Itachi transforming his eyes into their Majenkyo Sharingan form, having decided to kill Kisum. Before Itachi could act a man fell right before them kicking up a cloud of dust. As soon as the dust cleared they saw the man standing before them, he was 185 to 190 centimeters with white hair, a lean body, and a pair of unnerving ice blue eyes that seemed to shine with an inner light, the man was wearing a white coat, much like those that Akatsuki members wore only this one was totally white. I'm afraid I can't let you do that to him he said gesturing to Naruto. The bad, we will have to kill you too then, old man said Kisum drawing his sword. I hope to avoid this, but remember you asked for it said the old man with regret laced into his voice. Kisum launched forward intending to cut the man in half with his sword, but was stopped by the old man producing a sword out of nowhere. The sword was still in its sheath, but still its design was very strange, imagine a medieval broadsword, neither Itachi nor Kisum remembered to have ever seen such a sword design in all of the elemental nations, and they had seen almost all of them. The old man took the blade out of its sheath, causing a shockwave with threw them a balance, and cracked the rock they were standing above. Itachi threw his kunai toward the stranger, but the old man simply deflected it using the flat side of the blade and returned toward Kisum. Kisum had used this time to summon forth a wave of water nearly 10 meters tall and 11 meters wide, intending to crush the old man with a wave of water and ending the battle, but the old man simply disappeared and reappeared behind Kisum, and before he could react, he punched him in the face, sending him 50 feet away and making him cough blood. Itachi used his great fireball jutsu, but the old man disappeared and reappeared behind him, Itachi ducked from the punch and attempted to sweep his opponent's feet from under him, but the old man jumped and from nowhere he simply summoned a wave of water three times the size of Kisum's without any hand signs, and with a wave of his hands, the wave moved to cover him and Kisum, but Kisum used his water release. Tide reversal to turn the wave against the old man, but he could feel his chakra reserves rapidly depleting against the old man hold over the water. The old man felt his Kai reserves depleting against Kisum's jutsu, but Kai always regenerated faster than Chakra, and even if that wasn't the case he had insane reserves of any kind of power Kai, Chakra, Kai, Mana etc., so he wasn't worried about of running out, but what worried him was the fact that he wasn't to harm Itachi, for he would be a great ally for his young master in the future. As the old man struggled to keep control over water, Itachi again used his fire release. Great fireball helping not to kill the old man, after all he was an ally and quite a powerful one, judging by the way he was handling both Kisum and him without any wounds, and that was quite a feat, but he had to keep his cover. Before the fireball could touch him the old man's eyes shined a bright of blue, and a wave of force came out of his body and spread over the battlefield destroying the fireball, the body of water near him, threw Kisum and Itachi a good hundred feet away from him, and fractured the rock around them for a few hundred meters. You made me use the power of my eyes, congratulations, last time I used them it was a century ago against a very powerful demon the old man stated matter-of-factly, but now you are in deep shit. Before they could react the old man said gravity and the gravity in the area around Itachi and Kisum increased a hundredfold, creating a very large crater. Itachi and Kisum got up, they were covered in bruises and cuts, and they might have some broken ribs from the intense gravity. What baffled Itachi was the fact that his man Jekyo Sharingan reacted to the power of the old man, like the knowledge of such power was instilled in his very genes, like a song that you remember the melody, but not the words and title. Isum launched himself toward the old man, but the old man simply jumped away, but instead of falling down he stayed up there floating. The old man took his sword out and said wind and the sword glowed the same soft blue as the old man's eyes as he swiped, and a massive wind blade was directed toward Kisum and Itachi, it was only Itachi's speed that saved them both from being cut in half. 
it has been a long time since I had so much fun said the old man with a creepy grin, since I sparred against Hashirama Senju's wood release, actually. You are lying, you can't be that old, and how could you even stand against somebody who could defeat even the great Madara Cha himself? Asked a trembling Kissam. Madara was talented, but he forgot to hone those skills further believing himself invincible, even after he was proved wrong by Hashirama who trained a lot and was capable of unlocking part of the limitless potential of the wood release, as much as a mortal can, anyway the old man stated matter-of-factly. What do you men with the limitless potential of the wood release? Asked Itachi trying to stall him preparing to use his Tsukyomi. Of all the advanced nature transformations the wood release is the one with the greatest potential, the potential of a god's power in it, he explained. Itachi smiled as he said Tsukyomi, only for the old man to smile and say reversal and Itachi crumpled to the ground imprisoned in his own Jinjutsu. Isum took this opportunity to attack the old man and succeeded in landing a punch, and as the old man was falling, he body flickered to the ground and attempted to impale the old man, attempted being the key word as the old man shifted in the last moment, and Kisum succeeded only in cutting through his shoulder. The old man became white smoke and then reformed behind a boulder, the wound from Kisum had touched his bones, and he had to do this or risk losing control of himself, and he couldn't do that, or his young master would die. From the old man's body blood flowed, but unlike human blood, it flowed upwards and disintegrated releasing great pressure and heat, a gift from one of the old man's battle against a very powerful demon. Ying Yang. Healing of the damned said the old man is pure yin and yang energy, unlike shinobi's yin and yang, that was polluted with chakra, which dampened their powers of creation and destruction. Formed in his hand as halos of red and blue which he pressed against his wound and the wound healed instantaneity, but before he could react a wave of water broke the boulder he was standing against in half and surrounded him trying to either crush him with the pressure it had or kill him from the lack of oxygen. The old man closed his eyes and then when he opened them golden light poured from them as an inhuman voice said gate of the dawn light open and from the old man's body, light flowed outwards and the water evaporated instantly and from it stepped out the old man now bathed in golden light, which caused the rock around him to turn to lava. Isum terrified at the display of power, tried to run only for the old man to reappear right in front of him, and with a punch he threw Kissum 20 feet deep in the rock, with a severe condition of burning from the ultra-hot body part that touched him. As he saw that he run with the speed of light toward where Itachi was, and as he arrived there he stopped using the power of the gate, and his cloak of golden light disappeared. He approached Itachi and touched him in the forehead and said awaken and Itachi opened his eyes, but those were not the eyes of a man tortured for days within his mind, but those of a man who had been woken from the best dream ever. You could have left me in there for a little while more Itachi complained. Then you would have been lost forever within your desire as I have an almost limitless supply of chakra and then your mind would refuse to awake explained the old man. So what are your intentions for stopping us? Asked Itachi. I seek only to protect my young master said the old man. Who? Naruto? Asked a surprised Itachi. Yes, he is one of the few remaining descendants of the Atsutsuki family and the only one with a gift explained the old man. What gift? And wasn't that the family of the Sage of the Six Paths? Asked an even more intrigued Itachi. Yes that was but before that they were even more powerful, but then they declined and generations later Hagoromo surfaced to bring them back to glory, as that family is always destined explained the old man in time the family split into different branches, the Senjus, the Achihas and the Hayuga. After some decades other families split off from them, but the most prominent were the Uzumakis who had inherited some of the skills of their ancestors in the form of seals, and due to their nature, they were prime candidates for one with a gift to be born, and they didn't fail our expectations, as for what's the gift it's not my secret to give away. So can you at least tell me your name? Asked Itachi. In another time and place, perhaps, but not now said the old man do you know any healing jutsus? I do, why? Asked Itachi. Because I overdid it a little with your friend, now go and get him to me here, because only my powers can heal what the dawn's light harm said the old man in a sheepish tone, and I need you for an explanation on why he is still alive. Without saying a word Itachi left to take Kissum's body and returned after 10 minutes, only to find the old man in a meditation pose levitating 3 feet of the ground. Hey old man I brought him said Itachi. I know, I felt you both the moment you arrived said the old man as he floated down to the ground. He approached the unconscious form of Kissum and held his palms right in front of Kissum's abdomen, where his robes were torn and showed burned flesh and even some crisped organs, it was a wonder that he was still alive. Ying Yang. Healing of the damned said the old man as his palms were again covered in the ethereal halos of pure Ying and Yang energy, and he touched Kissum's abdomen. The wounds all disappeared only leaving a broken rib or two, for show mostly and a big scar in Kissum's abdomen. 
unfortunately it takes more power than that to properly heal the damage wrought by the dawn's light, and I'm not willing to waste it on your friend here said the old man take him and leave, a group of Anbus leaded by Kakashi had a car almost here, and it wouldn't do to find you here, would it? As Itachi and Kisum left the old man swore as he sensed the Kakashi had seen Itachi and Kisum, but he didn't have the time to fix things, the machinations of destiny had been put to work, and without a fully fledged master there was nothing he could do. The Kashi Haddock was having a troublesome period, and that was saying something, initially Orochimaru had attacked Konoha and then Sasuke left or had been taken nobody knew, and since there wasn't something better available at the moment they sent a group of rookies to do a veteran's job. Surprisingly enough they had succeeded, he guessed that Naruto had rubbed off on them, and then when he came to the valley of the end, he saw two missing nins leaving the valley, and he could have sworn he saw a third person in a white coat, but then it was only a brief moment, and he could have been wrong. As they entered the valley they were getting readings of residual nine tails chakra that were off the charts, and that could mean that the seal had loosened enough for Naruto to draw chakra from the nine tails, he suspected that had been Minato's plan all along, to give his son a fighting chance against the masked man. After a minute he saw Naruto's body lying unconsciously in the valley's bottom, and a man in a white coat was kneeled in front of him. The old man was currently kneeled in front of the unconscious form of his young master, the boy had the potential to be better than every one of his predecessors, but he had to grow out of his childish naivety first, if he was to survive the oncoming trials ahead of him. He sensed Kakashi had a body flicker nearby, and he felt the worry for Naruto rolling off in waves from him. Um forth Kakashi Haddock, I don't mean any harm to you or you sensei's son he said calmly. How did you now, I suppressed my chakra signature said Kakashi Kunai at ready to attack. There are more ways than one to feel a person's coming, shinobi, and to save us some time I know he is Minato's and Kashina's son, because I was there the night he was born, but unfortunately my hands were bound and I couldn't interfere that night, but I can today explain the old man. How is he? Asked Kakashi sensing truthfulness coming from the person in front of him. Dust exhausted and some emotional trauma, but he'll get over it eventually said the old man. Yang. Regeneration said the old man as he moved his hands over Naruto's body, he felt Kurama shiver within its prison, as it felt a presence even older and more powerful than itself. There, that should do it, take good care of him for me, Kakashi had sad the old man as he disappeared. Wait. Said Kakashi but the old man disappeared before he could say anything. Three days later, Kanoha's hospital. Naruto, Naruto. A voice whispered within Naruto's mind. Don't be that evil Jiji let me sleep some more answered Naruto. I'm not here as in Master Naruto answered the voice. Who are you? Asked Naruto realizing they were in his mindscape. My name will be revealed to you later time master, as to who I am, I am your protector answered the voice. How do you do this? It's so cool asked and excited Naruto. It's but a fraction of my power, the ability to manipulate pure Ying energy to get into somebody's mind and dreams, although it's the least used of my abilities answered the voice. Cool, can I learn how to do it, please? Asked Naruto. That and more my young master, unlike me your only limitation is imagination answered the voice. Wait why do you call me master? Asked Naruto. Because you are, I have served your family for centuries before they fell from grace explained the voice. Really so I am, what? Royalty? Asked Naruto. I will explain when we meet, but I came to warn you that right now there's a conspiracy to kick you out of he village warned the voice. But why? How? Spluttered Naruto. Because of the nine tails, they don't understand you, and what they don't understand they fear, and seek to destroy explained the voice. I don't care was the cold answer from Naruto finally I'll be rid of this hateful people. Don't judge many by the actions of few, there are good people in Konoha, but right now those who seek to harm you prevail, don't worry I have made my move, and if worst come to pass, then I will take you in comfort at the voice. Thanks said Naruto as he felt himself return to consciousness. At the same time, Hokage's office. The new Hokage, Tsunade Senju, was about to attend her first council meeting. She knew she was in for a very difficult challenge, as the old man had already told her about the councilman's plans to banish Naruto from the village. The boy was the only reason she accepted the office in the first place, and if they thought that she was going to just accept it, they were in for a surprise. As she entered the council chamber she saw the full council was in there, which was quite surprising as most of the time half of them were missing, especially the civil part, as they always had some important business to attend to, that being said, this only meant this was a very important matter for them all to be reunited, the only other occasions being urgent meetings. The foundation of Kanoha and the reunion 12 years ago to decide what to do with the heir of the fourth Hokage. Good day gentlemen, I'm really flattered that you are here too today on my first council meeting as the new Hokage said Tsunade deciding to play dumb. 
the honor's all ours, however we came here to present you a motion that concerns the safety of this village, said Kusumoto Hirakumi, a very influential businessman of Konoha thinking that she didn't even know what was to come as their spy informed them. What is this matter, I haven't heard of any such thing, have you Shizun? Asked Tsunade deciding to bait them even more. No, my lady answered Shizun. This matter just came up my lady said Kusumoto the demon boy, he has been proved to be a danger to the whole village, as he had almost released the nine tails in the valley of the end. And that calls for the renewal of the seals placed on him by his father, I don't get where the big danger is here said Tsunade, causing whispers to erupt within the council. Yes but there is also the fact of two missing nins, Kisum Hashikage and Itachi Ichiha leaving the valley, and we have reason they are after the boy, banishing him would be the best course of action that won't endanger Konoha said Kusumoto with a malignant grin. If that's the case then we should banish all of our best shinobus, including here you Kusumoto, as you currently have a killing contract on your head, currently this contract has been taken by an organization called Akatsuki. Which Kisum Hashikage and Itachi Ichiha are members she concluded, causing nods of approval from some of the heads of the Konoha clans, and shouts of outrage from the rest of the clan's heads and the civilian council. That's not the same the boy is also in danger of releasing the nine tails, well the rest of us doesn't said a very angry Kusumoto. And I already told you there's a solution to it, a fairly simple one, or didn't you get it said Tsunade barely keeping her composure. He is a demon cried one of the members of the civil council, well the rest of the shinobi council just stayed silent. He is a vessel for crying out loud, and even if it was so I have the final say as he is a ninja said Tsunade a vein showing in her forehead. Let's put this at vote, all those in favor of banishing Naruto Uzumaki raise their hands, said Kusumoto as he played his trump card, and three quarters of the council raised their hands. Indeed a majority vote, but you forget that I am essentially a military dictator, to which all shinobis owe their allegiance even more than to their own clans, and I didn't remember asking for a vote said Swan calmly hereby you Kusumoto Hirakumi are arrested on charges of undermining the authority of the Hokage, and all your fortune is sequestered and passed under ownership of the village of. Kanoha, anyone has any objections? Anzo watched from his seat as two Anbu dragged as screaming Kusumoto away, he liked the new Hokage's approach to things, but that went against his plans of recruiting the boy for his root Anbu. Their spy hadn't informed them of this, but that was something that could be fixed easily with his backup plan, one so well versed in the art of deceiving, and politics always had an ace under the sleeve. Now we are a member short I plan to appoint my apprentice Shizun Tadamasa as the new councilman, effective immediately said Tsunade, earning an uproar of displeasure from the council. If I didn't know you better I would think you are trying to replace the council with people loyal only to you said Hiyashi Hayuga with a hint of amusement in his voice. I'm merely replacing a retired councilman with another who is suitable for the job and who is more suitable than someone whom I have personally trained said Tsunade in a sweet tone that sent shivers down everybody's spine. That's very wise of you my lady, if we have concluded this council meeting, I have important business to attend to said Danzo as he got up. Indeed we are finished for today, the council is dismissed said Tsunade as she waved her hand. All the participants of the council left the meeting room and headed outside to discuss this new development. Three hours later in a mountain cavern in the border between the land of fire and the land of iron. The old man came out of a nowhere causing a ripple to spread in the air around him. As he sat down in a rock he let two almond-shaped jewels the size of a human eye drop out of his punctured arm into a metal box and then returned to his arm damn the kid, because of him I lost my favorite coat said the old man as he took he said yin yang. Heavenly restoration and golden light covered his punctured arm and healed the all the punctures and the venom that had been in his body before he could lose control and level the whole mountain. I see you haven't changed Akagi said an ethereal voice. But it can't be you are supposed to be dead unless trailed off the old man Akat Takagi. Unless I have transcended time itself, yes I learned how to do that, unfortunately I only figured it out moments before I died said the voice stepping out of the shadows, revealing a man with grey skin and horns. Agoromo, it's been a long time since I saw you said the old man as he hugged him. Indeed it has sensei, my brother would like to say hello, but he still hasn't got over sulking the fact that he left his eyes in the energy vessel, and now has to rely on his other senses said Hagarim, as suddenly a wave of force came out of nowhere and knocked him out of balance. I heard there came a voice much like Hagoromo's own but a bit deeper. That's the downside of having an ascended brother, he always gets to punch me even from another dimension said Hagoromo. I heard that to you know said the voice ending again another wave of force. You still haven't grown out of your childish behavior said Takagi laughing very hard. It has been the only thing that has kept us sane this last millennia said Hagoromo, so what do you need a pair of Renengan jewels? I'm going to give the Renengan to Naruto Uzumaki, the heir to the gift of the emperor said Takagi. So finally one has arrived, and we who though he was just the reincarnation of Asura said Hagoromo. 
well that means I will have to give him the half of my power earlier, and so will my brother. You know once he comes into his power he won't need that right? Asked Akagi. True but this has been my goal for all this time, to find a reincarnation of Indra and Asura that will break the cycle of hatred and to do that they are going to need to inherit half of my power each said Hagoromo. Well, just wait until he has advanced enough in his training before dumping all of that power on him, said Takagi in an authoritative tone which didn't take no for an answer, his full powers are greater than whatever you two combined can have, but he is still too young and unexperienced. Of course Ensei, you know I always was the responsible one said Hagoromo. That is not true remember Nishikawa said the voice of Himura Atsutsuki. Shut up said Hagoromo. Make me was the reply. Agaromo disappeared, and Takagi could have sworn he heard them mock fighting again like they did when they were young, and he had trained them into the use of their powers, as was his duty to train the heroes chosen by the emperors to eat the fruit of the Shinju, although Kagaya stole it, so she wasn't classified as a hero, despite being descendant of the last emperor. Anzo stood there listening the heads of some of the ninja clans of Konoha and the rest of the members of the civilian council discuss on how to get rid of the demon child. Dot. Frankly what they were doing was in his interest as he would gain a Jinchuriki as a member of Root, but he was afraid of the reaction of the new Hokage, she had shown she wasn't as passive as Hiruzen, and she dealt with opponents ruthlessly, the execution of Kusumoto for high treason was a perfect example. There was only one way to do this, and he would have to go out in the open in order for that to work. Gentlemen said Danzo stepping out of the shadows I think that I may have a solution for your problem. Anzo, I though you were neutral in this affair said a smirking Minamoto Hatsune, she was head of the Hatsune clan, a small clan which trained some of the best swordsmen in this village and were now after the fall of Ichiha trying to gain influence. Let's say I have an interest in keeping you all alive said Danzo. The Hokage won't kill us, she still needs us and our money said Asaki Ryu, currently the third wealthiest man in Konoha. You fools, you think you are still dealing with Hiruzen said Danzo laughing, she is the granddaughter of Tabarama Senju, and she has inherited his ruthlessness from him. Then what do you propose we do? Minamoto. Simple we go to the only person who has more power than the Hokage said Danzo. Who owe the demo, he won't listen, why should he? The Hokages have never failed him until now answered Minamoto to Danzo's suggestion. He will if we present our case the right way said Danzo smirking we will present the boy as a danger to the village, his battle with the Achiha and subsequent release of the Nine Tails Chakra being the prime example. If the Hokage says he is no danger the Daimo will believe her instead of us at Asaki. He will not if the boy is a relative of hers said Danzo his smirk turning into a full-blown smile. What are you talking about? Asked Minamoto. The Yuzumakis were allies of the Senju, and the first Hokage married Mito Yuzumaki, and from there we all know the story, but what many don't know is that Kashina Yuzumaki was the niece of Mito from her sister, thus making the Rudo and Tsunade cousins explain Danzo, much to the shock of everybody. So we have a way to banish the brat, but the problem is that contacting the Daimo will require lots of time, probably years said Minamoto. True but if you have the right friends then it won't take nearly as much a month or so said Danzo however to do that we will need a lot of money, which our estimate friends will be happy to give to us, right? Yes, we will give anything to make that monster leave so that our children may be safe, said Nakashima Yuringa, the second wealthiest man in Konoha. Very well then, prepare 5 million Raya within the week and in less than a month we will have a decree signed from the demo, which will legalize the brat's banishment said Danzo, and then we body flickered away leaving the conspirators to discuss some more on this new development. As Danzo left he couldn't help but laugh at the sheer stupidity shown by the group of conspirators, it would take only 1 million Ryo to buy an audience with the demo, but they unknowingly were paying for Root's continued existence, and what's more important, they would help him gain a new weapon, the greatest one out there, the Nine Tails. The next morning, in the outskirts of Konoha. Naruto had been waiting for this moment for the last three days, he would finally meet the old man himself, and not just through dreams. He had arrived in the clearing that the old man had described, at least he hoped that was the right clearing. Naruto looked around, but he could only see the trees, small animals moving, but not even a trace of the old man. After some time he decided to sit down and meditate in the pose the old man taught him. It was pretty simple actually, the clearing was so peaceful that it almost felt natural to meditate in such a place. After an hour or so Naruto felt the tip of a kunai pressed into his back. Reacting from instinct he pushed his body forward and used his feet to kick back, but his feet found only blank space. Naruto got up and at the same time drew a kunai from his bag and got into a fighting stance, only to see that the kunai that was pressed into his back was simply floating on thin air. Nice reflexes, but anything beyond a chunin, and you would be dead said the old man from up in the branches of one of the trees surrounding the clearing. So I suppose you are the old man said Naruto. Indeed I am, now I need to train you so that you can at least fight on an equal footing with a cage level opponent said the old man. 
Cool, so what are we going to learn? Some cool jutsu or some kick-ass jutsu? Asked an excited Naruto. No, we are going to learn history said the old man as he jumped from the tree and right in front of Naruto. That's dumb, why do we needs to learn history anyway? Asked a disappointed Naruto. You do because you need to learn the history of your family so that you can know the power that you hold explained the old man. So what power do I have? Asked an eager Naruto. You possess the greatest ability that exists, you possess the gift of the emperor said the old man as he gestured for Naruto not to interrupt, seeing as he was dying to ask a question, now the power originated from your many times grandmother, Araki Atsutsuki, exactly 4500 years ago. Who are the Atsutsuki clan? I have never heard of them asked Naruto. They are best known to Shinobis as the family of the Sage of the Six Paths, but before that they were the emperors of the elemental nations, and even a great deal of territory beyond that explained the old man. So I am royalty? Asked Naruto. No, well you do have the gift, the empire ceased to exist 1500 years ago when the last emperor and the last member of your clan to possess the gift choose to die answered the old man. Choose to die? Asked Naruto. Yes one with a gift can only die when and if he chooses, but that's not your power, it's a byproduct of your power, but we will get into that later answered the old man. Keep telling me about this Atsutsuki clan said Naruto. Well, your ancestor Araki Atsutsuki was the first one to have the gift, she hated war, so she sought to end it and unite the land, which at the time was in continuous war between the noble families, said the old man, in order to do that she united a group of people who had her same opinion and founded the gamer core using her vast power, we gamers have the ability. Well to make our lives as a game, the most useful ability was the one called Dungeon Creator, which allowed us to create a pocket dimension in which we trained, our power grew quickly, and the wars were finally stopped, and your ancestor was chosen as the first empress. In time the gamers noticed that they could cheat through their power, and from the best of them a black ops group was created, I myself was the best cheater of my generation, and became the last emperor's personal bodyguard and assassin, in the end I was entrusted by him with immortality, and chosen to train the new emperor finished the old man. So you are my mentor? Asked Naruto. Yes, now about your power, the gift of the emperor is a pretty simple power said the old man taking out a scroll, it allows you to take things from fiction and make them real, for example in this scroll, there is a description of the crystal that gives the power of a gamer you can take it out and then you will simply have to break it and you will have the power of a gamer. Which you must because every emperor must have it. So how do I do it? Asked Naruto. But I don't know, the last emperor said you must try to put your hand in the scroll and the story and the rest would be instinct said the old man. Really helpful, old man said Naruto. My name is Takagi, and for as long as we train together you will call me Takagi sensei or sensei said Takagi. Yes, sensei said Naruto as he tried to put his hand in but failed every time he tried. Naruto tried to put his hand into the scroll once more but failed again, he had been trying for the last three hours, but to no avail as he always failed. In a gesture of rage he punched the scroll, but the very anger he now felt caused something inside of him to click, and instead of hitting the scroll his fist, and due to the momentum his entire arm fell inside the scroll, and he felt with his hand the big pile of gems, and he took one. Naruto looked at the gem, it was almond-shaped, about the size of his hand, it had a deep purple color, and it radiated pure power that he could now see clearly, but no more than him. After taking out the gem Naruto had began to see the power of everything mostly in levels, and his was simply level. Apparently his gift of the emperor couldn't be measured in levels like most other beings' power. Remembering what Takagi said about the gem he crashed it into his fist, quite easy apparently, and he felt his body filling with the power that was once in the gem. He tried to use the dungeon creating skill, and a panel appeared in front of him enter name of the dungeon and enter level of the dungeon, and Naruto simply said chakra training dungeon, and after some thought he had a brilliant idea dungeon level. 100 and he found himself standing before a gigantic bear, as tall as the nine tails. Made of blue chakra with a sign above his head chakra bear LVL. 991. The bear at the side of him roared and charged and Naruto tried to escape, but he couldn't as the bear hit him with his gigantic paw and sent him hundreds of feet away breaking every bone in his body. The bear tried to finish the job and kill Naruto for good, but was stopped by a blue dome of energy, and as soon as the bear's paw made contact with the dome, the bear flew back a few hundred feet. The Kagi stepped out of the dome and took his sword out of its sheath sword of nightmares, and as he slashed it at thin air, the gigantic bear fell into the ground cut into two pieces. The Kagi took them out of the dungeon, while well, dying in a dungeon wasn't actually dying as you were reborn immediately, it was uncomfortable to say the least, and Naruto was too young to experience that so he had to use some of his more powerful healing power, seeing that having the gift made him pretty resistant to magic or any other form of power except his own. Yin Yang. 
restoration of the empire that little technique had no visible after effects, but was the only power that would work on him without him exhausting himself, that use of the yin yang was created by the first empress, when she noticed her immunity to the powers that others yield, and that worked as he heard Naruto's bones creak as they returned to their places and fully healed. After taking in the still unconscious form of Naruto, he decided to give him the Renengan already since the boy was so reckless. He took out the two gems from his inventory, opened the lids of Naruto's eyes and placed the gems above. With a flash of light the gems disappeared and Naruto's blue eyes became the soft purple of the Renengan. The boy is a natural, not even me can absorb the Renengan gem so easy, it should have caused at least a reaction, discomfort, pain anything, but no, I guess it has to do with the fact he has Hagoromo's blood flowing in his veins, thought Takagi, as he watched the unconscious form of Naruto. Time skip. Naruto woke up with a pounding headache. He looked around and what he saw surprised him, it wasn't the waterfall or the gigantic trees that seemed to touch the sky or the gigantic temple where he woke up, but the fact he could see chakra including nature chakra. He tried to get up, but his body didn't respond well at this attempt, his muscles still sore from staying for some time without moving. Take it easy Naruto, you have been unconscious for the last two days, your body needs to get used to moving again said Takagi from one of the temple's ledges. Two days I need to leave, Tsunade must have the Anba searching for me said a worried Naruto as he scrambled to his feet. Two days within this dungeon, Naruto, in the outside it has been merely half an hour said Takagi. But dungeon oh this one doesn't have bears right? Asked Naruto. No, this is a Renengan training dungeon explained Takagi. Why do we need a Renengan said Naruto as he ran to the nearest pool of water and screamed when he saw his eyes what did you do to my eyes? Calm down, Naruto, I gave you the Renengan after seeing how reckless you are, if the power of a god doesn't keep you safe, then you leave me no choice, but to stay always near you, and I don't fancy that said aboard Takagi, you turn the Renengan off and on at will, since those eyes are truly yours, and none can use their full potential except for you. Really said Naruto as he focused and his eyes returned to their normal blue with what are we training first. But the diva path as it has the most destructive potential said Takagi. Time skip. Naruto and Takagi came out of their dungeon looking fully refreshed. Naruto's eyes were still in his Renengan form, as the old man had advised him to use it so that he could get used to the vision they granted. I'm leaving now, see you tomorrow, and no further exploration of dungeons without my presence at least no dungeon above level 10, understood asked Takagi with a slightly threatening one. Yes, sensei, in what dungeon should I meet you tomorrow? Asked Naruto. Outer path training dungeon, you still have to master that path said Takagi as he teleported away. Naruto then turned around and headed for the village, it had been a long 12 days for him and Takagi, although outside it had been only 3 hours, the cool thing about dungeons was that despite the amount of time you spent inside you only aged, according to the amount of time that had passed outside. In that time Naruto had mastered all of the 6 paths, thanks to the use of the multiple shadow clone, especially the diva path which he had mastered to a degree that allowed him to perform some gravity-based jutsus unknown to anyone, except for the sage of the 6 paths, his brother, Takagi and Naruto. The other path that Naruto had easily mastered was the pre-top path, his mastery was thanks to his using of the multiple shadow clone jutsu, and according to Takagi, he had mastered the six paths except the outer path even faster than Hagoromo Atsutsuki, even if he had used the multiple shadow clone jutsu. The power that he had discovered in the pre-top path was amazing, not only one absorbed chakra from other living beings, but it could also absorb nature chakra even while moving, technically it would allow him to become a sage without the need of summons and to keep such a form for a limitless time spawn. Furthermore it gave one a perfect control over chakra to the point one could replicate bloodline limits, and if he was right, it could have the ability to turn natural chakra into normal chakra, granting one a limitless supply of chakra seeing as natural chakra was infinite. As he got near the village gates he turned off his Renengan, and he felt that without it activated something was missing, the world lost its color, and everything seemed so dull. The guards didn't even pay attention to him when he entered the village gates, so he headed immediately for his home, not looking back to see the dirty looks the guards were giving him. Two months later. Anzo was a very happy man, he had finally got the decree signed from the demo, and although it had taken more time than expected, he would now have the perfect weapon against the enemies of Kanoha. He had entered the Hokage Tower with a smile and was heading toward the room where the meeting of the council was happening. When he got to the door he stopped smiling and adopted a serious face and then entered the room. At his sight the council members smiled and prepared to teach the Hokage a lesson. Yes Danzo with what may I help you? Asked Tsunade. I'm here to attend the council meeting or have my rights as councilman been removed? Asked Danzo pretending to be offended while transporting the parchment to the hands of Minamoto. No of course not, but I thought you had some pressing matters to enter like that said Tsunade turning back to the other members of the council. 
Lady Tsunade we have a pressing motion to present before you said Minamoto. And what would that be? Asked Tsunade obviously bored. The motion for the removal of the demon child, Naruto Uzumaki said Asaki Ryu. I though we closed the matter two months ago, or do you want to pay a visit to Kusumoto threatened Tsunade. Of course not but for the safety of the village you mustn't let your emotions control you, he may be your relative, but he is still a danger to the village said Asaki. I'm being objective said a very angry Tsunade releasing her killing intent. The daimo doesn't think it that way said Minamoto producing the scroll with the seal of the daimo. The daimo has no right to banish my subjects said a very angry Tsuan many of the civilian council fainting from the intense Kai in the room. No, but he does have the authority to declare a ninja a missing nin, and that's what Naruto is as of now in a village who harbors a missing nin, who would contract us anymore. Said Minamoto tossing the scroll to Tsunade. After reading it the amount of Kai that Tsunade was releasing increased immensely, and only the ninja members of the council were still conscious. With a sign of her hand she summoned an anbu. Find Naruto Uzumaki and escort him outside of the village, but no harm must come to him, or you'll deal with me threatened Swand. Immediately my lady said the anbu and he body flickered away. Wake them up and then leave my sight except you Minamoto Hatsune, you are under the charges of treason against your hokage, how do you plead? Asked Tsunade. Innocent, how may I ask have I betrayed my hokage? Asked Minamoto. You have undermined my image in front of the demo, and last time I checked that was treason said Tsunade waving her hand, and two anbu entered the room. You are doing this just because you don't want the boy to be banished said Minamoto. Be that as it may be you are still guilty, take her away said Tsune to the two Anbu. Her replacement will be Kakashi Haddock, anyone here has any complaints said Tsune, and when she got nods of no she said they well you are dismissed. In the meantime outside of Naruto's apartment. In the last two month Naruto had fully mastered the power of the Renengan and had been trained in the other powers by Takagi, he was allowed to even slay Asuras and Divas and acquire their powers, so it wasn't a surprise that he felt the Anbus approaching, especially since they were oozing negative emotions. Two Ambus, one wearing a tiger mask and the other a fox mask body flickered in front of him. Naruto Uzumaki you are hereby banished from Kanoha by the order of the Daimo of the Land of Fire said the Anbu who had the tiger mask. On what grounds? Asked Naruto. You are a danger to the village and you are a demon, aren't those reasons enough? Asked the fox Anbu. Not for me, but since you don't want me anymore I'll get my things and be off said Naruto as he headed toward his apartment. No you're not, you are a missing nin, and so you will leave with only the clothes you are wearing said maliciously the tiger Anbu. I don't think so said Naruto as he was about to enter his house. You just made my day said the tiger Anbu fire release. Fire bullet. Naruto sensing the chakra spike teleported away and saw as the fireball touched the wall and the wall exploded. He turned his Renengan on and he said lightning release. Heavenly artillery without making any hand signs as his pre-top path made it useless, and five streams of electricity came out of his hands and headed for the Anbu who dodged and retaliated by using the fire bullet jutsu again. Naruto dodged summoned a massive storm of flames through the use of magic by muttering a few words. That kind of magic needed no power only the ability to calculate which Naruto had in abundance. The storm took them by surprise, and the tiger Anbu quickly made some hand signs and shouted fire release. Fire torrent and from his mouth a large stream of fire came out, but it only served to strengthen the fire storm more, and he was hit by it. When the storm cleared the tiger Anbu was laying in the ground completely nude since his clothes had burned in the fire and his body was covered in nasty burns, which would kill him if he didn't get medical attention, the only reason he was alive were his chakra imbued clothes. The fox Anbu had been smarter and had dodged the storm and tried to attack Naruto from behind, only to hit a clone which dispelled in a cloud of smoke. Naruto whistled to the Anbu who looked up to see the boy standing on the roof of his apartment and quickly flashed through a few hand signs and shouted wind release. A thousand cutting blades and a strong wind gust which held the power of a thousand blades headed toward Naruto who muttered a few words and an arrow made of golden light headed toward the Anbu and passed right through the enemy jutsu which ceased to exist since Naruto absorbed all the chakra it held and pierced the Anbu right below his heart, a fatal spot, but not immediately. He entered his house and put all of his items in his inventory and then proceeded to teleport away in the forest outside of Kanoha. When teleported in the forest he stumbled a bit and cursed himself, he had never been very good at long-range teleporting since the calculations changed a bit and he had yet to master them as he did with the rest of the calculations of that magic. Come here to Kagi, I have already sensed you said Naruto as he sat down in a meditative pose. So they succeed to banish you, the fools they have no idea what they have lost said Takagi as he took the same pose as Naruto. They even sent a couple of aggressive ambus, but I dealt with them said Naruto. I should go down there and turn that village into rubble, but there are still good people there and they don't deserve to suffer for the wickedness of few said Takagi seething with rage. What do we do now? 
asked Naruto. Now we turn you into the mightiest warrior this world has ever known, since the last emperor said to Kagi, with an all too sweet tone, and Naruto knew he was in for a lot of pain. In this two years Naruto had fully mastered the normal powers of the Renengan. The curious thing about the Renengan was that it simply mirrored the human potential, everything that can be done with the Renengan can be achieved through training, although it could take insane amount of time to achieve such a level of power. The only humans to have even come close to such a power being Hashirama Senju and the first Yuzukage, especially since he discovered way to permanently seal the Sharingan, Madara not counting, since he had a watered-down version of the Renengan. The eyes spared Naruto the need of centuries of training and allowed him to delve further into the Renengan's more advanced powers. One such example being the power of the pre-top path to absorb nature energy, even if you were moving and turning it into normal chakra, but it could also be used to maintain the sage mode for an indefinite amount of time. According to Takagi, the eyes were as powerful as the owner, which meant he was the only one, alive, to be capable of yielding the legendary power of Hagoromo Atsutsuki, Aka the sage of the six Renengan, had the added benefit that it allowed him to use every special jutsu derived from the eternal Manjekyo Sharingan, and it had none of their drawbacks. He had also learned different magical discipline, at which he excelled, especially when it came to magical dueling, vast area spells and runes, although he was still lacking when it came to potions or the more mundane spells. When it came to the usual ninja stuff he could be considered an S-ranked ninja, but that was if he used his Renengan and magic, and he didn't like to become dependent on them. The area he most liked was Fuinjutsu, which was no surprise due to his Uzumaki heritage, and the Namaka's heritage gave him a speed and dexterity bonus which was gladly accepted. His current level in Fuinjutsu was. Exotic Fuinjutsu Mastery LVL. 15, but he was currently stuck there because it needed too much X to gain a new LVL. And despite he used it every time he fraught in his dungeon dimensions, the advanced mastery was hard to level up. Naruto had managed to recreate the Flying Thunder God technique and had improved it a bit, although this new improvement had yet to be tested. He had also learned the art of technique creation. The process was pretty boring, as it involved calculations, as it was needed to calculate which hand seals were needed for the jutsu, the right way to mold the chakra etc. Strangely, being the son of the yellow flash gave him an plus 30% x when it came to new technique creation. He had already achieved to create three new jutsu, although one might be considered a new bloodline limit. The first was meant to imitate the Susanoo, but was also meant to be way superior to it in the same time. It evolved from a simple technique to a full-blown nature release. He nicknamed it the Celestial Release, as it was used to draw mystic energy, nor chakra, mana, kai etc., and give it a shape, the shape of an armor, which increased the wearer's strength, speed and regenerative abilities. Now, while the Renengan didn't give the ability to create bloodline limits, seals could take two or more different chakra natures and merge them to create a new bloodline limit, and then the chakra was introduced into the body's chakra pathways little by little, causing it to imitate the new chakra, the only reason this wasn't done was that it put the body under a lot of pressure. Enough to kill and it was only thanks to healing spells and the yin yang. Heavenly restoration that Naruto survived the process. The second was the ultimate jutsu, a one-shot kill technique, capable of bypassing every kind of defense one might have, and the yielder of such a jutsu could technically speaking destroy armies without even getting a scratch. The technique was a kinjutsu, a sword jutsu, it could be performed with any sword, as long as it was made of chakra conductive metal, and that the user had enough chakra. It worked by causing the sword to go through dimensions, multiple dimensions at once, to avoid a Kamui user to survive by becoming intangible, and the tip of the sword was transported right inside of one's body, usually in the middle of the heart, in the frontal lobe or at the intersection between the brain and the spine, meaning instant death. The only downside being that only those with really large chakra reserves could even think about using it, since it required a lot of chakra to utilize. The third was an army killer jutsu. The jutsu was enlightening release technically speaking, technically speaking, because the user only spent minimum amounts of chakra to gather the clouds and then to cause lightning in the clouds to become stronger by tenfold, which wasn't done by chakra, so one only needed to start the reaction and then it continues on its own. The result was a massive thunderstorm which could be directed by small amounts of chakra to hit any target in a half mile radius. The lightning bolts from the storm were truly destructive, especially when used against large numbers of foes. In those two years he had gained a reputation as the Lightning Fox Warrior or as the One Man Army, due to him always taking almost suicidal missions, alone, and coming out unscathed and successful. The first nickname was earned by using his father's Flying Thunder God, which he used in the form of Senbans who had a small piece of paper, with the formula attached to it, in combination with his army killer Jutsu, that he had named Lightning Release. Heavenly Retribution. 
well the second out of the fact that he could create up to 2000s clones and still have enough chakra to equal that of a few jhanans, and the way he utilized them, made him resemble more to a small army than to a single ninja. The Kagi appeared before him using his teleport ability. He was wearing armor beneath his usual white coat, which meant a lot of trouble. Nado come here, now said Takagi with a concerned voice. Yes, Sensei said Naruto appearing right in front of Takagi in a burst of speed. It's time for your first mission of an Emperor class said the man. Well that's good right? Asked Naruto. Not so good, you'll have to face a demon said Takagi with a frown. Didn't the previous Emperors kick them all out? Asked Naruto. No, not all of them, they're just too many to get rid of completely explained Takagi. So this one is particularly dangerous? Asked Naruto. He's a medium threat, but still I'm worried about you, you have yet to become immortal, said Takagi with a reproachful glare directed at Naruto. I'm not becoming immortal I thought that was settled said Naruto. It'll happen, whether today or after a few decades, it is inevitable said Takagi. Yes, whatever, old man, anything I must know about this demon? Asked Naruto with a shrug to Takagi's comment. Yes, its name is Mrim, this little guy found how to merge himself with the released negative energy of the entire mankind, and there's a whole lot of it around explained Takagi, but as expected for one so weak he only succeeded partially, but that still made him stronger and technically immortal. So there's no way to kill him, and I am not that good with seals yet said Naruto. No, his physical form can still be killed by the ancient chakra I gifted to the priests of the land of demons, but they are only human and don't have enough chakra to pull it off explained Takagi. So all I'll have to do is combine my chakra with one of the priest and bye bye demon? Asked Naruto. No, it's too dangerous for you, and if the priestess of the land of demons can effectively seal it, then there is no need to take unnecessary risks, answered Takagi, you'll be hired as an independent ninja to escort her to the shrine where the body of the demon is sealed, however there's a problem there. I didn't expect nothing less, what is it? Asked Naruto with a bored face. There's only one priestess left, and her guardians have already contacted Ninja from the Leaf, a team is supposed to meet them tomorrow, but some of the old people still remember me, so they will grant an audience to us too in order to decide who is going to escort her, and even that is more for bureaucracy than anything said Takagi, well clearly lost in memories. Fond memories? Asked Naruto. A few, but that isn't your concern young man answered Takagi snapping out of his memories. Of course it is, as your emperor I must look out for the well-being of my subjects, said Naruto joking. Not until you kill your first god and even then I will judge whether you are mature enough, said Takagi with a smirk. That's not fair pouted Naruto. And yet it is how things work, so no complaining, get back to training, said Takagi with a small smile upon his face. Yes, sensei said Naruto before throwing a stink bomb in front of him and disappearing within one of his dungeons. Naruto couldn't help but laugh at the face of the old man when the stink bomb exploded and was rewarded with a giant club swinging too close to his head for his own comfort, not that he couldn't avoid it, he just didn't like being so close to dying, although he knew he would be resurrected if he died within one of his dungeons. Avoiding the club Naruto jumped away and prepared to face his new opponent, a 16 feet tall ogre, with grey skin, yellow eyes, proportionally large limbs, totally naked, except for a piece of cloth in front of his scrotch. He was a LVL. 53 giant ogre, those guys were dangerous, especially if they hit you, but on the other side they were pretty slow. Naruto took out a bunch of senbens and threw them in the air, and with enhanced seal, they dispersed all over the dungeon superficies, or at least a decent piece of it, as these things were as big as needed. He took out a very long katana, this katana was pretty normal, except that its blade was 150 centimeters tall, it weighed 8 kilograms, not a big deal for Naruto, especially since he used seals which made the sword lighter, but only for him. He lazily started teleporting around the ogre waiting for others of its kind to gather, and he wasn't disappointed, in less than 10 minutes 30 of them were gathered in a circle trying to hit him. Then Naruto teleported to a nearby tree while switching with a shadow clone, and rapidly manned the six hand seals needed to summon his army killer jutsu. In a less than 30 seconds, storm clouds gathered around the ogres, and three lightning bolts came down, hitting in three different parts of the ogre formation, and totally obliterated the ogres. He looked satisfied at his handiwork and smiled, he had been getting better in the precision strikes from the storm, and then he saw a massive ogre yielding a staff with a red skull upon it approach him, looking positively pissed. Naruto used his observability on him and it said. Ogre Shaman LVL 59. This ogre had shamanistic powers, and he is seriously pissed at you for killing its children. Naruto smiled, that was what he was after, the ogres he had just killed barely gave him enough exp to fill half his level up meter, and this was only an LVL. 
6 Dungeon, since Takagi stopped Naruto from going into higher levels since he refused to become immortal, or maybe he just cared too much for him, either way, it seriously pissed him off, especially as it was Takagi who told him that he was a prodigy, surpassed only by the first and fifth emperor. Naruto snapped out of his thoughts in time to teleport away from the tree, just as it was struck by a lightning, not as powerful as his, but still strong enough to do some big damage. Okay, play time over said Naruto going through eight hand seas and said ninja art. Piercing sword of truth. His katana's blade glowed with all the colors of the rainbow, especially the first 10 centimeters of its blade, in a second the glow was over, and the ogre fell, blood coming out of his mouth, as his brain was cut in two from the inside of his head, no outside injuries. He saw five more shamans running toward him while sending fireballs in his direction. He dodged them and went through the hand seals again and said ninja art. A thousand piercing swords of truth while pointing his sword toward the approaching group and they to fell, their brain severe from the spine, meaning immediate death. For the next half an hour, Naruto fraud against wave after wave of shamans, and after leveling up only once, he got out of there while saving it as a boss fight stage, a stage where you fraud only against boss class opponents, you could have as many as you wanted, for every level that you got to kill 10 bosses in. He wasn't even tired, Takagi had tough him what he called cheat codes, messages that if sent through a mental channel to none in particular, gave you an unfair advantage, in this case infinite chakra and stamina. Them as the one with the emperor's gift had an infinite array of ways to cheat, of which cheat codes were but one, while the other gamers had only cheat codes, given to them by the emperor and the Ludo, board game in which you rode in every quadrant, a bonus for example, plus 30 intelligence, plus 30 stat points etc. But they must have at least three different types of bonuses for the gamer ability to interpret as something gained in a mission. He didn't use them often as he felt they made him seriously overpowered. After emerging from his dungeon, he saw that Takagi was sitting in a lotus position, in the middle of a small pond, and was meditating. He immediately opened his status page. Naruto Uzumaki. Class. Gamer. LVL. 56. Points to next level 8.00106.000. Age. 16. Height. 180 centimeters. Weight. 58.3 kilograms. HP. 14.700. Takra points. 64.100. MP. 150.000. Karama's CP. HP regeneration. 80 horsepower sec. Karama's horsepower regen, 700 horsepower sec. Takra points regeneration. 2.000, CP sec. Karama's CP regen, CP sec. MP regen. 15.000. Energy. 131. Control. 100. Strength. 53. Speed. 115. Vitality. 91. Dexterity. 80. Intelligence. 151. Wisdom. 128. Luck. 100. Special status. Uzumaki and Namika's air plus 10 intelligence, plus 15 vitality, plus 10 speed plus, 30% expan view and jutsu and technique creation, Jinchiriki, plus 100 horsepower, plus 100 CP for every new LVL. Trap Master, plus 10% to traps and plus 10% to stealth. Stat points to allocate. 10. Naruto didn't think twice, he really needed to improve his speed, especially if he was going up against a very powerful enemy, and the speed he had could make the difference on whether he died or lived. Well he wasn't so worried about dying, since we was pretty sure Takagi would resurrect him, just to have the pleasure to rub it in his face that he needed immortality. But that he put the entire 10 points into speed, he wasn't in the mood to create a Ludo board so he could gain some more points. Naruto Uzumaki. Class. Gamer. LVL. 56. Points to next level 1.00107.000. Age. 16. Height. 180 centimeters. Weight. 58.3 kilograms. HP. 14.700. Takra points. 64.100. MP. 150.000. Karama's CP. HP regeneration. 80 horsepower sec. Karama's horsepower regen, 700 horsepower sec. Takra points regeneration. 2.000, CP sec. Karama's CP regen, CP sec. MP regen. 15.000. Energy. 131. Control. 100. Strength. 53. Speed. 115. Vitality. 91. Dexterity. 80. Intelligence. 151. Wisdom. 128. Luck. 100. Special status. 
Yuzumaki and Namika's Air Plus 10 Intelligence, Plus 15 Vitality, Plus 10 Speed Plus, 30% Expan View and Jutsu and Technique Creation, Jinchiriki, Plus 100 Horsepower, Plus 100 CP for every new LVL. Trap Master, Plus 10% to Traps and Plus 10% to Stealth. Stat Points to Allocate. Zero. It is good to know that I have gotten rid of the Prankster King status, though Naruto that thing was really a pain in the ass, and then he added as an afterthought, I should really stop using the Ludo game board, that thing has made an really overpowered ninja, especially when it comes to Chakra and Monori Gen. When he opened his eyes he saw Takagi standing over him with a scroll in his hand and with a very evil smirk. Before Naruto could do anything Takagi dropped the scroll, which emitted an obnoxious brown colored gas, which really stank. Takagi, you will pay for this shouted Naruto, dispelling the stink gas. His only answer was a laughter that came from nowhere and a piece of parchment which said, you're free to do whatever you want until tomorrow, I expect you in the border of the land of fire and the land of wind and 12 o'clock tomorrow. Naruto shrugged at the letter and though it would be a good time to visit Gara. In those two years he and Gara had become great friends and he was always invited to stay in Sunagakur every time he passed by during a mission. During this time he and Tamari had gotten closer and that earned him a friendly talk by Kankuro and Gara, which had made Naruto blush and answer, I quote, it's not like I like her like that, which caused Gara and Kankuro to double over from the laughter. Next day, in the border of the land of fire and the land of wind. Naruto appeared in a flash, in what seemed a desolate strip of rocky cliffs, which marked the border between the two lands. He saw the Kagi was already there, wearing the same armor as yesterday, and keeping a sword much like Zabuza's, only this one didn't have any bandages to hide the silvery metal, which he recognized as Mithril. So how was your girlfriend? Asked Akagi joking and earning him a blush from Naruto. For the last time, she isn't my girlfriend shouted Naruto at the top of his lungs. Yeah, yeah whatever you say said Takagi with a noncommittal shrug. So are we going to go or what? Asked Naruto. Of course, grab my forearm said Takagi offering Naruto his arm. Not that, please, not that pleaded Naruto. Of course we'll use heavenly transportation, or do you know any better method of travel to a place you have never been? Asked Takagi with an evil smirk. I swear, you must do that on purpose, said Naruto grabbing Takagi's forearm. Naruto felt himself being squeezed through a tube, the result of traveling in that particular dimension, while it allows for you to go to places that you haven't been before, it also makes one puke, at least someone not used to that particular method of travel. When the squeezing feeling stopped, he and Takagi were standing in the middle of a courtyard, filled with different trees, bushes and among those bushes grew small flowers. Those are the emperor's bell, I gifted them to the priestess and priests of this land almost a thousand years ago, explained Takagi, most lower level demons can't stand being within a mile radius of this flowers, while the rest are burned, less if they are really powerful, due to the energy that they have gathered by being near emperors for three thousand years. Cool, but doesn't that mean that my weapons or pets will become something like that? asked Naruto. No, they were fed on purpose by the emperor's mana, they never liked demons trying to sneak into the palace, so they created this he answered pointing at the flowers. Master Takagi, we are so honored that you came here to assist us on this task, said an elderly woman, whom he found through his observe, to be named Yashimura. Of course, I would never leave you defenseless in the face of such grave danger, but now my apprentice will be taking over my duties, said Takagi. If he can do half of what you can then we are in very good hands, said Yashimura unfortunately, the people on the council are too young to remember you and appreciate your power. That won't be a problem, he can give them a show of his power, said Takagi not worried in the slightest. The problem is that your apprentice is going to face Kakashi Haddock, an s rank ninja, last time I checked said Yashimura. It must have been a long time ago then, he currently is a rank ninja, although with a bit of training he could be back to the level of power he once held and even surpass it, interrupted Naruto while making battle plans, so who else are in his team? The girl named Sakura Hurano, Niji Hayuga and Rock Lee, why? Asked Yashimura. Well, while he may be strong they normally use a four-man team, and I was curious to know if any of my friends was here, replied cheerfully Naruto making the two elder people face palm themselves. Either way go get ready said Taki. I already am replied Naruto with an evil smirk, which scared the shit out of Yashimura and made Takagi smile. Then go and met your friend's order Takagi, while I take care of this little brats. Immediately sensei said Naruto as he disappeared in a burst of speed. The kid is special said Yashimura leading Takagi toward the council room, and it is not because of his power. But he is said Takagi as he entered the council room. Naruto appeared in front of Sakura, Niji and Lee in a burst of speed which caused them to grab their weapons and almost impale him, like they could. When they saw it was Naruto they were so surprised that their jaws meet the ground. Naruto, it's so good to see you said Sakura as she hugged him. It's good for me too, so how are you guys doing? Asked Naruto. 
very good, I'm still waiting for a rematch said Nichi. And I do want to test my strength against someone as youthful as you said Rock Lee with fire blazing in his eyes. Bet in line, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to fight Kakashi first answered Naruto, which caused their eyes to go wide. But he is an A-rank ninja, how can you hope to defeat him? Asked a worried Sakura. I have a few tricks up my sleeve answered Naruto with a smirk. The four young people spent the next hour talking, talking about how life had gone in Konoha after he left, learning about the moves the Akatsuki had made. Although he and Takagi had been keeping an eye out for the Akatsuki, not even them were omniscient, and they needed every piece of information they could get. Itachi had been a great help in that regard, but even he didn't know the end game of Akatsuki and Naruto had a feeling it was going to be something really big. After an hour the Council of the Land of Demons, Kakashi and Takagi, came out of the meeting and headed toward the Four Ninja. A council stopped at the entrance of the garden, but Yashimura, Kakashi and Takagi moved toward the young ninja, and by the way that their chakra flared, they were positively pissed. Kakashi sensei, it's great to meet you again said Naruto with a bow. Nice to meet you too, it has become very boring in Konoha without you around, said Kakashi ruffling Naruto's hair. What can I say, I'm unique said Naruto with a very big grin. Don't give yourself so much credit, said Kakashi you know Tsunade has been giving hell to the council for your banishment. Well, knowing her temper, I'm surprised she didn't gut them instantly said Naruto with a passive look. Well, the council decided that a fight was in order to decide who would be the best escort for Lady Xian said Kakashi. But I'll make sure not to hurt you too much, we can't have a member of the council going to a meeting covered in bruises, said Naruto with a mischievous grin. I see you have a great informant, but you must also know I can kick your ass anytime I feel like it, said Kakashi smiling behind his mask, I have been training to be Lady Tsunade's replacement. And yet you are an A-rank ninja, but it's not your fault you have small chakra reserve and a blind spot when you are no using your Sharingan said Naruto. Hey, I don't have small chakra reserves, they happen to be average exclaimed Kakashi. But for the position you are attempting to occupy, they are small replied Naruto. We can't all have chakra reserves matching those of a small biju answered Kakashi. You are so wrong, no matter how much you train most mortals can never even go close to the reserves of even the one tail, they are just too big, it's just that the Yuzumakis inherited the high chakra reserves of the Sage of the Six Paths, said Naruto causing all present, except for Takagi to go wide-eyed. You must be kidding me said Kakashi. No, not at all, the Senjus, the Ichihas and the Yuzumaki are all descendant from the Sage of the Six Paths intervened Takagi. Where do you think the Sharingan came from, or the immensely large life force of the Senjus, Yuzumaki is not included as they are descendant from the early Senju, thus not directly linked? Asked Naruto. I never though about it that way replied Kakashi. Well, there's a reason that only those of Ichiha bloodline can use the Sharingan without dying of chakra exhaustion, said Naruto, but don't get discouraged all the powers of the fabled Renengan and Sharingan can be achieved with training, a lot of it, but there's a possibility at least that you can actually achieve such a power and beat me. No need to worry at all because I'm going to defeat you said Kakashi. Well, so cocky, I would have though my father would have taught you better commented Naruto, which really shocked Kakashi. How did you found out? Asked Kakashi. I was examining my seal when I found two foreign chakra signatures that were not of the nine tails, whose name I'm not at liberty to tell, and I figured that they would be there for some reason, so after months of hard work, meaning three months ago, I created a seal which allowed me to extract that chakra and seal it somewhere else. While at the same transferring it a bit of my chakra so that they could last for more than one meeting, explained Naruto imagine my surprise when I found out that the two chakras belonged to Minato Namikas, Aka the yellow flash of Konoha and Kashina the red death of Konoha, and that their chakra signatures were almost identical to mine. Wait, wasn't Minato Namikas also the fourth Hokage, the one who supposedly killed the Nine Tails? Asked Niji. Yep, the one and only, he decided that he couldn't force someone else's child to be the container, so he made the ultimate sacrifice and sealed it into me, his son. But leaving a part of his soul and chakra to help me in dire need said Naruto, much to the shock of the council and the three young ninja, my seal however, allows me to feed my chakra to them, and so create a connection to their souls in the pure land, so that I can speak with them any time I want to. Can you let me speak with him? Asked Kakashi in a pleading tone. Of course but I better keep you from my mother, or she will tear you apart, dead or not, especially if she learns you still read Icha Icha said Naruto with a chuckle. Yep sounds like the Kashina I knew commented Kakashi now we are going to fight outside of the temple, they don't fancy seeing their flowers being trampled. Well, what can you do? They really love their flowers rhetorically asked Naruto, while sending some of his mana into the flowers, causing hundreds of them to blossom and cause the council to drop their jaws. In a few minutes they were out of the temple, that place was really big and came in a rocky meadow to some distance from the temple. 
He and Kakashi bowed to each other, and then Naruto dived to dodge an attack from Kakashi, he had gotten faster, but he was more. Naruto took out a dozen senbens and threw them to the sky saying Flying Thunder God, Amusement Park, causing the senbens flying in different directions and landing a very big distance from him, which caused Naruto to smirk. I suggest you use the Sharingan, or I might hurt you said Naruto. You forget that I saw your father use that jutsu and I know its weakness replied Kakashi. You forget I'm not my father said Naruto as he disappeared in a yellow flash and gave Kakashi a punch in the gut. Remember you asked for it said Kakashi revealing his Sharingan. But that he launched himself with greater speed toward Naruto who simply teleported out of the way and into a tree branch, only to feel the tip of a kunai to his throat and see the Kakashi in the field, dispel dot he teleported away again, only to dodge a kunai charge with lightning chakra. So that's how he wants to play though Naruto as he spawned a few dozens of shadow clones without the need of hand signs. The clones teleported away with the signature yellow flash and Naruto went through a few hand seals before shouting celestial release. Sky Guard Eternal Armor and in a millisecond a mass of energy wrapped itself around Naruto taking a human form, albeit a 3 meter tall one, and with Naruto in the center, the armor had the same azure color as a cloudless sky. Told you that you can have the power of the great eyes without the need to actually have them said Naruto with a grin. The copy of Susanoo, I'm impressed said Kakashi making a few hand seals fire release. Twin fire spears and two streams of fire shot out of his hands. No, the idea came from Susanoo, but this is way better said Naruto, as his armor withstood the flames without even flickering once. It seems a bit small, don't you think, said Kakashi as he tried to analyze the jutsu and a bit small too. I wasn't planning to destroy mountains said Naruto as he disappeared in a flash of azure light and punched Kakashi in the gut and then hit in the chest, causing him to go through a few trees. I hope you armor can withstand this said Kakashi as he took the position to create his signature jutsu lightning cutter. Naruto didn't move from the path of Kakashi and took the full brunt of his attack, or better the armor did. Kakashi was surprised when his hand didn't pierce through the armor but was instead stuck in a small crack enough to fit the tips of his fingers in it. He didn't have the time to react before he was kneed by Naruto and was sent flying. Naruto jumped and tried to chop Kakashi in the neck, but the moment he hit him, Kakashi disappeared in a cloud of smoke and was replaced by a log. Naruto smiled and instead of falling down, he flew with a great speed toward a few trees, and although he missed Kakashi, he did totally disintegrate a few trees, getting disbelieving looks from the council and his friends, and an approving nod formed to Kagi. Man, I need to fix that flaw, said Naruto as he landed. What flaw? Asked Kakashi, blood dripping from his mouth. It was designed to withstand your lighting cutter, without even a scratch, said Naruto with a shrug that was imitated from the armor also. Well, that armor is already an S-rank jutsu, I shudder to think what it would be like if it was as strong as you playing for it to be said a flabbergasted Kakashi. Well if you think that is strong I would really be interested to know your opinion of it, when I go in my special sage mode through celestial release, it puts the Renengan to shame, commented Naruto causing Takagi to face palm, the Renengan sage mode was more powerful than the celestial sage mode. Enough talking let's fight said Kakashi taking a bunch of explosive tags and saying Kamui. The tags were teleported right in the back of his armor and exploded filling the entire field with smoke. Kakashi really hoped he hadn't killed him. The smoke was cleared away from a strong gale of wind and they all saw Naruto standing in the middle of a crater, with his armor having a few gashes from where the explosive tags exploded. Kakashi sensei, let me show you the true power of the Uzumaki said Naruto, as in a yellow flash, a few pieces of paper appeared in the armor's hand. Shit was the only thing Kakashi could say at the obvious display of durability of Naruto's armor, it offered the perfect defense. Naruto got out of the crater and went for Kakashi only for him to dispel, using his momentum Naruto spinned around and threw the pieces of paper toward Kakashi and said sealing art. Great orb of gravity seal and channel chakra through the pieces of paper and immediately a giant wave of gravity created a massive crater where once Kakashi stood. Kakashi came out in the back of Naruto's armor accompanied by a shadow clone and went through a few hand seals and said fire release. Phoenix flame formation and a few dozen fireballs went toward Naruto while the clone said lightning release. Storms barrage in the same amount as the fireballs. The electricity ball headed toward Naruto and met the fireballs midway and merged in orange glowing orbs. Kakashi said explosive release. Explosive barrage as his clone dispelled, having spent all his chakra and the orbs crashed in Naruto's armor, creating a huge explosion, way more powerful than the explosion from the explosive tags. When the smoke cleared in the recently created crater, was left only a few strips of azure energy, but no sign of Naruto. Before Kakashi could do anything Naruto appeared behind Kakashi in a yellow flash and without his armor and hit him in the back only for Kakashi to dispel in a cloud of smoke. 
Kakashi came from the underground and hit Naruto with a chakra-enhanced punch, right in the jaws, sending him flying seemingly unconscious. As Naruto hit the ground, a second Naruto, clad in his armor, appeared right behind Kakashi and placed a seal on him which caused Kakashi to go stiff and fall to the ground senseless. The Naruto standing in the ground dispelled, revealing to be a shadow clone. He immediately dispelled his armor and neared Kakashi and started to transfer some chakra and placing a few healing seals on him, since his CP and horsepower meter were flashing red and covered his eye. I think we saw who won, Isui said Yashimura to a member of the council. Indeed, the boy wins this contract, he will be the one to escort Lady Xion to the shrine, said the man named Isui as he turned and left. Congratulations, Naruto, but what was that armor made of, because I saw it, and it wasn't chakra said Nichi. It's a secret said Naruto. Awesome jutsu, Naruto, the flames youth burn bright in you, said Lee with fire in his eyes, I still want to fight you, but later, when I have grown a bit stronger. The same goes for me said Niji, a small smile having made its way in his lips. Whenever you feel like it said Naruto and he turned toward Kakashi who was up and smiling his seal and chakra having restored him at his fullest. Thanks for the chakra and seals, also brilliant strategy complimented Kakashi. Thanks it means a lot coming from a genius like you said Naruto with a bright smile. Not such a genius after all said Kakashi scratching the back of his head are you sure you don't need any help with this, we would be more than happy to help you. Nah, I can handle it answered Naruto, which made everybody sweat drop. You never change do you? Asked Kakashi rhetorically. Never, now take the seal and when this mission is over push some chakra in it and it will take you to my hideout, said Naruto. Why? Asked Kakashi. So me and the old man can help with those low chakra reserve and take you back to the S rank you once were said Naruto. Even if you helped me with my chakra reserves, it would still be in vain, the eye consumes too much and it stays active all the time. Explained Kakashi. Well the old man can help you with it, he is a legendary seal master, and that is a rank, the highest possible, I still am an exotic seal master, meaning I still have to achieve the adept seal mastery before I become a legendary seal master explained Naruto. Do you think he can seriously help? Asked Kakashi. Of course, the last person who was a legendary seal master discovered how to permanently seal the Sharingan and possibly the Renengan, helping you will be a piece of cake, said Naruto now I must leave, I mustn't keep a lady waiting. Naruto entered the building in front of him, with a smirk in his face. In a few minutes they were standing in front of a blonde girl with kind of creepy eyes, and she just excluded an aura that said, Pratt. He looked at her for a minute before turning toward Takagi. So we're supposed to protect the blonde Pratt? Rhetorically asked Naruto which caused Takagi and Yashimura to chuckle and the rest of the council to go red from anger. Boy, watch your mouth, she is the priestess, and her name is Xion not Pratt said a member of the council, which Naruto didn't even bother to learn his name. You say Xion and I hear Pratt replied Naruto looking at the slightly amused face of Xion. You'll die said Xion plainly, with no emotion you will be impaled in the chest by a monster. Nice, I'm so scared replied Naruto. Master Naruto, pay attention to her warnings, she can see the future warned Yashimura. Yeah, I know she sees the death of peoples, but I have a bad news for you priestess I will not die, not until I achieve my goal, and I have at least meet my nephews, said Naruto with his trademark grin. Foolish boy, you know nothing, I wished it was that simple, but my visions always come true, said a visibly angry Xion, displaying emotions for the first time since their meeting. You know you remind me of a boy who had a fixation with fate until I beat it out of him replied Naruto. My visions can't be changed relied Xion back in her monotone voice. You know, I'm tempted to actually hit a girl for the first time in my life, said Naruto telepathically to Takagi, which made Takagi chuckle. Yeah, just wait and see said Naruto defiantly. Enough, with this disrespect toward the priestess, or we will threaten a member of the council before being interrupted by Naruto. What? Hire the leaf team, you will not because you need the best, and I am the best so shut up and let me do my job, said Naruto rather angry why do councils have to be pricks with a stick shoved up their asses everywhere. Naruto, you will not fall to their level, said Takagi in a calm voice, but that showed great disappointment. Yes sensei said Naruto with a slight bout or Takagi. Very well and you will not disrespect him anymore or else there will no longer be a land of demons understood said Takagi, the last part and he said in a demonic voice, and the council members nodded. Well, we will be retiring to our room said Takagi, and as he was leaving the room he added oh, and by the way we will be sleeping in the room next to the priestess. As Takagi and Naruto were walking along the hallways toward their temporary room, Naruto looked positively angry, and he entered the room so angry you could actually steam coming from his ears. As soon as they entered the room they would be standing in, Naruto summoned some chakra ink and guided it with his chakra to form into a triangular seal, which glowed blue before becoming totally invisible. Takagi sat on a chair and smiled. 
You did very well commented Takaki. Are you sure, won't the spy get suspicious that we used a mental channel that can be spied in very easily? Asked Naruto. No, since there are very few that can actually do that, he would think that we didn't think that anyone could do that, so we were very lax on security answered Takagi, taking out a pipe and started smoking a foul-smelling herb, which actually made the brain work even better. Seriously, paranoia is the sign of a true ninja, but then again, I'm not exactly a ninja, said Naruto with a shrug. Indeed, let's just hope Orochimaru falls for your reckless attitude act said Takagi. I still don't get it how Orochimaru is more dangerous than the entire Akatsuki. Asked Naruto. He is because he is a genius, a mad genius, but a genius nonetheless, and the fact that he is crazy only makes him more dangerous responded Takagi. Yes, I know you can foresee what a sane person would do, but not what a crazy person would mechanically recited Naruto. True, now get some sleep, you'll need it, said Takagi getting up. See you in a few days, Gramp said Naruto laying down on his bed, not before making some other seals, just to be on the safe side. Don't worry, if you need me, I'll be there said Takagi. Like, there is anything out there that can harm me said Naruto. Error said Takagi. You seriously lost your sense of humor said Naruto pouting. Well, 3000 years of life do that to a person, replied Takagi chuckling, but if you survive this mission, I will teach you the ultimate cheat, one taught to me by the emperor himself. Really, what is it? Asked Naruto. You'll find out when I teach it to you, it's not that you don't have better or more versatile cheats in your personal emperor cheat guidebook, but this one is pretty awesome, commented Takagi before disappearing in a cold blue flash, a flash with the same color of his eyes. Naruto wondered what powers did those eyes grant to the old man, probably a lot seeing as those eyes could block the Renengan itself. Nothing to worry though a cheater could never turn against its master or their bloodline, without permit from a fully-fledged emperor, they were the equivalent of Anbu and Rude Anbu, loyal to the end. Sleep claimed him after a while, before he woke up to screams of men dying, the smell of charred flesh, the coppery smell of blood and massive chakra spikes. He was up in a second, his sword in his hand and in a flash he was outside in the courtyard. Naruto saw the first side of the carnage, every other battle he had fought had been quick, the least bloody he could manage, even his heavenly retribution turned all enemies into ash, but this was a true carnage, made by people who loved pain and blood, and they would pay. He didn't have any illusions, he too was evil, but at least he granted his enemies a quick death, he was an evil the world needed. He saw them firing fire jutsu against the guards which were trapped in Jinjutsu. He stopped to use observe on his enemies, Kusuna LVL. 38, Gitai LVL. 34, Satsuna LVL 34, Shizuku LVL.34. They weren't much of a threat, but he would play it carefully. But the though, chakra ink flowed from his inventory, and guided by his chakra, it created a circle which flared with a bright red color, creating a massive dome of yellowish energy which prevented anyone from entering or leaving the monastery. The four ninjas saw the red glowing seal, and immediately went toward it to destroy it, fools, they act as street brawlers, and not as ninja though Naruto before appearing behind the ninja named Shizuku, and with a silent swipe of his sword his head departed his shoulders, before the blood splatters could touch him, Naruto retreated in a small bamboo forest. But this guise had planted within the monastery. From within the forest he created a hundred shadow clones and put them to work on seals, for while his opponent were weak, being prepared was the second golden rule of ninjas, the first was to kill silently and quickly. The three remaining ninjas had stopped and had gathered back to back, smart but useless as he flashed to the nearest of them, his name was Gitai, and with a quick slash of his wind chakra enhanced blade, he was now headless. The remaining two tried for the last time to reach the seal and destroy it so that they could escape, but it wasn't mean to be as two pieces of paper appeared beneath their feet, and one of them produced a violet fire which engulfed and killed Satsuna, while the other piece of paper absorbed Kusuna, and with that the battle was over. Naruto walked over to the corpses of the two decapitated ninja and placed a piece of paper on their bodies. The papers glowed before burning themselves and the bodies, leaving nothing beyond ashes and at the same time filling Naruto's head with information regarding them. The information he got made him frown, the demon or at least half of him anyways, had found a way to give them some of his power, no wonder they were acting so mindlessly. He turned around to see the surprised faces of the guards, he didn't care, so he walked past them and toward the council, which had arrived only moments earlier, and they too were surprised at the demonstration. But the though the yellowish dome of energy disappeared, some show of power was needed, especially if they were to trick Orochimaru into thinking that he was reckless and a show-off. Did you enjoy the demonstration? Asked Naruto as he passed by them, he couldn't manage a smile, but he managed a weird grin, he had killed what did they expect of him, he had just killed three men's and was about to interrogate another. He didn't expect for an answer, but walked past them. On his way to his room he saw the blonde girl hugging one of the guards and whispering something to him. 
she turned around and saw Naruto with a shocked expression, which meant that the person she was hugging had been saved by him, but as to why that would shock the girl so much he didn't get. Xian neared him with an expression that seemed like shyness, but he knew it was the pride she was swallowing. Naruto, I came here to thank you for saving my friend, his name is said Xian swallowing her pride. Arashi said Naruto shocking Xian even further. How did you know? Asked Xian. Because I'm death, the destroyer of worlds and I don't like being cheated, said Naruto in a scary tone, frightening Xian and her two guards, before laughing at loud kidding, I heard one of the guards call him by his name, and I memorized it as any ninja would. Anyway thanks, maybe fate isn't set in stone she said blushing from the embarrassment of being scared and letting it show. I told you so said Naruto slipping back into his immature persona. Very well, see you tomorrow said Xian as she turned around to leave bright red from Abgar and embarrassment. Okay, and don't take any of your guards with us, said Naruto turning around. Why? Xian asked while her imagination began to run wildly at what the reason was. I travel very fast and they would only delay us, and while I can carry you on my back, I can't carry them around, said Naruto as he entered his room. Naruto unsealed the body of Kusuna and immediately activated his Renengan. He placed his hand on Kusuna's forehead and activated his human path ability soul worm, immediately information entered his mind as the soul of Kusuna screamed in his hands, not that anyone who hadn't the Renengan or at least the Manjekyo Sharingan would hear or see him. He let the soul go to the afterlife, he hadn't gotten much more information that with the rest of his team, even if he had used soul worm on him, the most advanced ability of the human path that he knew anyway, it allowed him to extract the soul and absorb all of its knowledge and skills, but he couldn't do yet the skill part, and also it wasn't supposed to kill the person it was used on. Naruto disposed of the body with the seal that produced the purple flames, that thing was a lifesaver, it totally destroyed a single object, unless the seal was modified for other purposes, it didn't release any smoke, and it emitted no smell, not even an Inuzuka dog could tell that a person was incinerated on that room. As he laid on the bed his mind replayed on his match with Kakashi, he was awesome he knew it, but still without his Renengan or the Furball's Chakra, he was way below the S rank, probably a low A rank, but even if Kakashi had abandoned his training completely, he would still be at least a high A rank. And when the match was over he actually looked relieved, it had probably something to do with the stone army, golems to be more exact, but they didn't know it, they though they were just elaborate stone puppets, and it would be better if they kept thinking that because that would mean that they would still hope that there was a hope to destroy them. In reality they were lucky the demon was only half awake, otherwise the golem army would be invincible, by ninja means of course, and they would have lost by now. That meant the match was just a way to gauge his skills, and apparently he was pleased. Naruto suspected it had something to do with his flying thunder god. Amusement park, he had created it to compensate for the his slow progress with the original flying thunder god. The technique practically allowed one to defeat even opponents as powerful as Madara or Hashirama Senju, but that was if you were a true master of it, and he wasn't, hell he doubted if his father had the necessary mastery over it, despite him being the one who transformed the jutsu from a kinjutsu support technique into a weapon, a mass destruction. Naruto banished those thoughts and emptied his mind, this technique allowed his body to fall asleep faster and require one hour less sleep. As he though sleep claimed him in less than a minute after activating his semi-meditation state. His sleep was troubled by a dream that was remarkably similar to the vision that Xian had told him about. He woke up in the morning drenched in sweat, a quick water jutsu in the backyard of the temple took care of that. He changed clothes to be more similar to the ones his father wore while in missions, it wasn't that he was trying to copy him or anything, but that outfit was the most suited when in operations that required stealth. After all he didn't want to draw the attention of a thousands year old demon by wearing orange as much as it pained him to give up on orange. Xian was waiting in the courtyard dressed in a white shirt, brown pants and a vanilla-colored coat. Falanking her were her loyal protector Teruho and the members of the council, which by the way were looking positively pissed off except for Yashimura, and even she was a bit worried. What is this travesty I have heard of, boy spat a male member of the council. What you finally realize those robes you are wearing are a crime against all mankind's eyes. Asked Naruto nonchalantly. Enough you little said the council member. Enough, Takeda stop this nonsense, he's a kid for crying out loud, and you demand of him to behave according to a set of rules he doesn't even know, said Yashimura in a stern voice that caused everyone present to flinch Naruto included, and to make it worse, you treat him like he was your servant, when he is the one who will protect the high priestess, show more respect. Like he deserves it said the now named Takeda, with a very low voice. Did you say something Takeda? Asked Yashimura in an all too sweet voice. And no, nothing said Takeda quickly. Well that's settled then, young Naruto, you may now leave toward this destination, said Yashimura in a neutral voice, and away from this moron she added in a voice that only Naruto and Shion heard. Hop on said Naruto pointing to his back. 
with reluctance she hooked on Naruto's back, and she felt herself being tied by some invisible force into Naruto's back. Naruto immediately jumped across the wall of the temple and landed a few dozen meters away, Shion shrieked from surprise, but after a few dozen other jumps like that she finally relaxed. While they were jumping across trees Naruto couldn't shake the feeling that something bad was going to happen soon enough, and not one to ignore his sixth sense, he created a few hundreds clones which quickly spread through the forest, sealing scrolls at ready for any emergency. Surprisingly Xian didn't ask any question, but just stared at the clones for a moment before returning back to her brooding. Luckily his suspicion was proved wrong, and the day went on without a problem, even when they crossed the border between the land of demons and the land of fangs. Her paused a couple of hours after they crossed the border, the sun was setting, and the foliage of the forest was dense enough to hide them from the eyes of all but the most talented ninja, then in part to the seals he had placed around the campsite to prevent anyone from finding it. The seals worked as a subtle suggestion that told one to leave the area without properly checking it, and only those with the strongest willpower could go through them. Such a thing could only be done by an S-rank ninja and some higher rank, but even if they did pass through them he would know, and it would take him exactly 32 seconds to leave the camp together with the prior high priestess in training and detonate a whole shitload of modified explosive tags. He unsealed two tents and called some of his clones to help set the camp while he went to meditate and have a chat with the furball. He found a secluded place within a minute. It was a small excluded clearing, even more so than a normal clearing in the forest, in the middle there was a stump of a tree and a few flowers that he couldn't make out in the dim light offered from the moonlight that found its way through the dense foliage of the forest, and he couldn't bother to activate his observe just to find out their names. Naruto sat down on the tree stump in the lotus position and cleared his mind and willed himself to enter his mindscape. Once that was a tedious task, he couldn't stay still for long until he found out that that because of his abnormally large reserves of chakra, so Takagi had given him some chakra storage seals to pour his extra chakra into them. Allowing him to actually stay still for more than half an hour and to always have extra chakra in the far-fetched case he might be running low. He felt himself being pulled into his mindscape, the feeling wasn't bothersome in by itself, but for someone who was trying to access mental powers the feeling was quite unnatural, especially since he was training to project his mind outside of his body rather than inside, but the mindscape was the perfect place to evaluate your progress as it contained what you had learned and even your reflexes. But he had learned to stay away from then, a week of getting tickled every time the wind blew over his skin had taught him that. His mindscape was designed after a giant mountain that never ended, filled with caves that held memories, things he had learned, skills etc. That made it difficult for someone entering his mind to take control, especially as the mountain was always shifting, and that stopped only when he was inside it. He quickly made its way to Kurama, or rather he willed himself there, since inside a mindscape will and thought were the only thing that mattered. The cage looked the same as ever though if you looked inside you would notice that the space was limitless and filled with stuff that the fox liked not that you could tell, since Kurama knew a trick to make the scene blurry when you looked upon them. Kurama appeared right in front of him and stretched his hand attempting to capture and probably squeeze Naruto. Yeah, nice one Kurama, but we both know you love me too much to actually do that, said Naruto in a bored voice while sporting a small smile. That's disappointing considering that you used to jump away when I did that, replied Kurama chuckling. Yeah, that was like a million years ago answered Naruto a bit flustered. Not that much, a few months actually replied Kurama laughing at the expression on his face, so what you came here for? I feel something coming said Naruto slipping into serious mode. I do too, but don't worry you can survive it said Kurama, after all the most powerful of the tailed beasts is going to help you. Still insisting on this matter you're not the most powerful of the tailed beasts, said Naruto seriously annoyed. I challenge you to find a tailed beast more powerful than me boasted Kurama. Let me think said Naruto with a wicked grin plastered on his face the ten tails, the ten tails original form, Thurin of the flaming tails, do you still want me to continue? Thurin doesn't count, he is a demon not a tailed beast bouted Kurama. He counts, being made of chakra, check, has many tails, check, is an arrogant bastard, check replied Naruto his grin threatening to rip his face apart. Hey I am not an arrogant bastard exclaimed Kurama. Yeah and I am Kami answered Naruto. Whatever, if you wanted to know if I will help you then yes, now leave all but roared Kurama. Sore loser said Naruto. I'm not replied Kurama as Naruto fully vanished. The were echoed the voice of Naruto. Kiki brat muttered Kurama with a foxy grin. Naruto woke up from his trance and nodded to his clones to dispel. He returned to camp and entered his tent without talking to Xian, seriously she was worse than Niji and Sasuke combined, and that was saying something. 
He didn't need to sleep at much, but he still needed to be at full strength for whatever was coming, and he wasn't talking about the demon. He was a minor nuisance for someone that was a seal master and had his powers, but no something else was after them, and he had a feeling that he wanted to prepare himself for whatever was about to come. He woke pretty early and started to pack everything, after he had packed everything except the tent in which Sean was sleeping, he created a dozen clones and went to warm up a bit. When he returned he saw Xian sitting in the middle of the clones, and when they dispelled he learned she had gone through a fit when she learned he hadn't woken her up and that he had left her with some meager copies. You are seriously annoying said Naruto as he threw over his shoulder and took off. Let me down you ignorant peasant screamed Xian. If you say so said Naruto as he threw her from his shoulder and down the tree, but before she could fall to the ground, a shadow clone snatched her and brought her in front of the original Naruto and dispelled. What was that for? Asked a visibly shaken Xian. That was for making fun of my clones, they are a part of me given form by Chakra, so please refrain from insulting them, least next time you fall they decide to let you fall, said Naruto. Are you threatening me? Asked Xian taken aback. No, Kami forbid it, I'm simply warning you, I can't always control what my clones do, said Naruto, as he offered his back to Xian. Why do you treat me like this? Asked Xian as he hopped on his back. Because, I don't like people like you, answered Naruto. People like me? Asked Xian. Yes, people that use fate as an excuse for their failures said Naruto. You don't get do you, whatever I see comes true, and I only see death said Xian. Oh, but I do, the old man told me how it works, said Naruto shocking Xian however, instead of respecting their sacrifices, you throw them all away by being a prat. I'm not a prat answered Xian. No, are you sure, because you sure do look like one to me replied Naruto. You don't understand do you? Of course not you have never experienced pain like I did said Xian bitterly. On that one you're right, I haven't felt pain like that, I've had much worse said Naruto. How? Asked Xian. I am a Jinchuriki said Naruto confusing Xian. But shouldn't you be treated as a hero, you saved them all by imprisoning a demon? Asked Xian. True but civilian are idiots, and ninja found it easier to just blame me, instead of seeing me for what I am, so they just shunned me, they didn't let their children play with me, they yelled at me for no reason stuff like that said Naruto with a sad tone. I'm sorry I didn't know whispered Xian. It's not a big deal, really said Naruto, but don't expect me to apologize for earlier, I really hate people that use the fake bullshit as shield from reality. Why? Asked Xian. Because the only persons who use it are spoiled people who had a much easier life, and when life gets tough then they play the fake card, and the fact fate doesn't exist, destiny does, but that is more like a destination rather than a set road, you chose the path you want explained Naruto. You really think that? Asked Xian. Of course, now keep it quiet or someone is bound to find us, and then things will get ugly, said Naruto as he quickened his pace. The next few hours were peaceful, with Xian asking more of Naruto's life in the hidden village in the leaf and Naruto answering. Xian was starting to come out of her shell slowly, but she was coming out. The problem started when they passed the border of the Land of Claws, a few minutes after the pass through he felt two massive chakra signatures, such signatures could only belong to S-rank ninjas. One of the signatures was weird like there were five signatures mixed in it, but four were being surprised by a powerful earth-natured signature, he immediately recognized it as the signature of Kakuzu, that while terrible was a tolerable presence when compared with his teammate. Haydn, the result of the experiments of the Jashinist cult, Immortal, could only be killed by the all-killing ash bones or the truth-seeking balls, powers that Naruto didn't possess or incredibly powerful magic that while he possessed, Naruto was reluctant to use, lest he end up destroying a nice portion of the country in which they currently were. The fools, dabbling in such dark rituals and magic and what's worse using chakra to fuel them, thought Naruto as he sensed them gain on them. Naruto changed course and quickly created a shadow clone and gave Xian to him, and with a gesture which told her not to ask questions, but leave he turned into the opposite direction and ran as fast as he could. He stopped when he arrived in the bank of a river, trees didn't grow in a distance of 100 meters of the river on both sides, all in all as good place as any to fight 2s rank ninja. He didn't have any illusions he would have to use the Renengan if he was to stand a chance, especially against the two of them. The two ninja appeared in front of him in less than a second. He used observe on them and what he saw troubled him deeply. Hide in LVL. 85 Jashinist Immortal and Kakazu of the Five Hearts LVL. That was to put it lightly, troublesome. Hayden was not that much of a problem as he relied on getting somebody's blood, but Kakuzu was not a foe to underestimate after all he had fought the first Hokage, even if it was after the first Hokage's prime, and had escaped with his life, a feat only four ninja in the entire world could brag about, including in their Madara. Come with us willingly, and we won't hurt you much said Kakuzu. And if you don't I'll offer you as a sacrifice to Jashin-sama, said Haydn with a gleeful voice. 
No, thanks, I don't plan on becoming a sacrifice to a demon, said Naruto calmly. Dashin Sama is a god, not a demon, you little shit screamed Hayden. Oh, but he is a demon, he is called Jashin of the Black Mist, said Naruto calmly enraging further Hayden. Enough, Hayden he is trying to get under your skin, warned Kakuzu before Hayden could move. Oh, enough with the talks, let's dance said Naruto as he jumped in the air flying Thunder God. Amusement Park. Dozen of Senbin shot out of Naruto's sleeves and flew up in the air before speeding in different directions. In the meantime Kakuzu went quickly through hand seals and shouted water release. Swirling vortex and from the river a vortex of water circled Naruto and closed on him with great easy. Naruto escaped flashing away with his flying thunder god, but before he could rest he heard Kakuzu shout fire release. Spiraling dragon massive dragon of fire spiraling onto himself flew toward him, Naruto instead of fleeing as Kakuzu expected blurred through a few hand seals and shouted wind release. Cleansing wind of the north and a massive gust of wind overcame the dragon and dissolved it into a cloud of fire which Kakuzu avoided, but Haydn was not so lucky. Earth release. Forest of spikes shouted Kakuzu and true to the techniques name a forest of earthen spikes sprouted from the ground and forced Naruto jump up on a nearby tree, only to be met by a punch that sent him flying. Naruto recovered quickly and with a single hand seal said in an even voice Yuzumaki secret fuinjutsu. Playing ground of death and immediately from countless lips of parchment, different fumes of different colors came out, some exploded, and some weird arrows made of some dark wood flew toward Kakuzu who managed to dodge. Before he could go through other hand seals he felt a sharp pain in his abdomen and he saw Hayden's scythe sticking out of his belly. He jumped forward and activated a seal which glowed yellow before his wound closed like it never existed. Nice strategy boy, but you forgot that you are fighting 2s rank ninja, not one said Kakuzu in a disappointed voice. Who said I did responded Naruto as a shadow clone appeared from a seal ride underneath Hayden and shouted fire release. Spiraling Rasengan and an orange Rasengan that looked much like a drill hit Hayden in the chest and sent him flying a few hundred meters away with a nice hole in his chest. Damn kid, I wanted to do that myself said Kakuzu before he fell on his knees what is happening to me. You breathed answered Naruto as he plunged a kunai into Kakuzu's chest. When he noticed that Kakuzu wasn't getting up Naruto rolled his eyes and made a few hand seals and shouted wind release. Grand dragon breath and a gust of wind came out of Naruto's mouth and headed straight for Kakuzu, which substituted with a log in the last moment. So you know, what gave it away? Asked a smiling Kakuzu. You have five different chakra signatures, which one I destroyed? Asked a grinning Naruto. Do you really think I will tell stated Kakuzu? It was worth a shot said Naruto with a shrug. You fucker shouted Hayden waving his side what did you do? I made you look prettier stated Naruto which turned to Kakuzu what is he? A street brawler. You know I ask that to myself every day said Kakuzu before speeding toward Naruto which simply flashed behind Hayden and cut his head off. Before he could shove an explosive tag into Hayden's head, a black whip hit Naruto in the back and sent him flying, however before crashing into a tree Naruto flashed right behind Kakuzu and crashed into him with the momentum of his hit and before Kakuzu could recover, he flashed away again. Kakuzu got up quickly, accidentally shoving a mouthful of dirt into Hayden's mouth and speed toward Naruto again. Naruto speed toward him too only to flash away in the last moment and appeared behind Kakuzu, but he found his kunai blocked by a black whip and a punch coming his way. He flashed away leaving the kunai and the whip and when he reappeared, he found his kunai traveling toward him which he dodged before he made a simple hand seal and said Uzumaki barrier. Toxic death barrier. Around Kakuzu a dome of energy appeared and the dome was quickly filled with toxic gas. The gas disappeared after a minute or so, only to see that Kakuzu was standing there unaffected and with his senses telling him he hadn't lost another heart. He silently cursed as he settled into the ragging whirlpool, a fighting stance designed to fight an opponent that was one superior in brute strength and hopefully give him an edge against him when he felt Kakuzu's chakra spike in surprise and fear. He immediately turned around to see a blade coming toward him and he flashed away to a tree in the opposite part of the clearing his battle had created and what he saw made his heart plummet, there standing in the tree exactly opposite to him was Arachimaru, wielding the legendary Kusanagi. What do you want, Arachimaru? Asked Kakuzu. Kuku, is that a way to greet a friend? Responded Urchimaru. You little fucker, I'll cut you into little ribbons and offer you to Jashin Sama, said Hayden, trying to cut Arachimaru with his scythe, only for him to sidestep him and with a swipe to cut him in two. Now that the pleasantries are out of the way, leave ordered Arachimaru in a tone which sent shivers down Naruto's spine. Why should we do that? Asked Kakuzu preparing himself for a fight. Because you like your little form of immortality, you know Kakuzu, there's a way to destroy all your five hearts at once, and I know it, and then Hayden I know that technique said Arachimaru, making both ninja afraid and making Naruto wonder if there was another jutsu that could kill Hayden, as the two ways he knew required the Renengan which Arachimaru didn't have. 
Your L Lang stuttered hide and taking a step away from Orochimaru. You want to bet said Orochimaru getting into a fighting stance. Hum, Haydn we're leaving, it's not worth said Kakuzu as he joined a now stitched up Haydn and left. They're nice boys taunted Orochimaru with a creppy smile. What do you want? Asked Naruto. Isn't that obvious? Retorted Orochimaru. The nine tails. Replied Naruto. Stop feigning to ease stupid and brash I saw through your act the moment I laid eyes on you snarled Orochimaru now answer me what do I want? The test my flying thunder god answered Naruto. True, to an extent, I also want to see the progress of the son of the only ninja to both defeat me and outsmart me, said Orochimaru in an exited tone of wah. Hiraya still kicks your ass, retorted Naruto. True but the fool can never outsmart outside of combat, and even in combat he only wins because he has got overwhelming power more than intelligence, explained Orochimaru calmly. Yeah but he can force Itachi to a stalemate, and if the circumstances are right even defeat him while well, last I heard of you, he totally crushed you, scoffed Naruto. He can but that is much due to his greater mastery over seals when compared to mine, explained Orochimaru with a hint of anger in his voice, and then he fights to kill an eye to capture, it wouldn't do to kill such an incredible specimen, would it? Well, thanks, I'll be leaving now said Naruto. Koo 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 and you will leave your little friend to die. Asked Orochimaru pointing toward the unconscious figure of Shion in the hands of an Orochimaru clone. What guarantees me that you won't kill her anyways? Asked Naruto. Because I still need her to imprison the demon answered Orochimaru surprising Naruto, but his sixth sense told him that that was the truth, despite not sensing any chakra fluctuation from him. If you want a fight, a fight you will get said Naruto as he slid into a fighting stance and activated his Renengan. Why am I such a surprise, you truly are an unpredictable ninja, aren't you? Said Orochimaru before speeding toward Naruto. Naruto stared at Orochimaru waiting for him to make the first move, and Orochimaru did, by throwing a smoke bomb which nullified the advantage of the Renengan, he truly was a genius. Orochimaru appeared behind Naruto with a body flicker and threw a nasty punch aimed at Naruto's head, but he found his fist blocked in mid-flight. Naruto turned around and threw a few explosive tags at Orochimaru and then disappeared with a body flicker just before the tags exploded, Orochimaru having the speed and reflexes of an S-rank ninja escaped with a body flicker as well, only to find the place where he dropped out of the body flicker, littered with imploding tags. He disappeared again in a body flicker and then turned to see Naruto standing a few meters from him. You're good, but such tricks won't work on me, Orochimaru shouted as the noise that the tags going off made hearing a bit hard. Perhaps but I was just testing you said Naruto nonchalantly before he disappeared in a flash of yellow. He appeared in the left side of Orochimaru, who having expected Naruto to appear behind him, had launched a kick right behind him and proceeded to stab Orochimaru in his arm, he had initially tried to stab him in the kidney, but he had reacted too quickly and the kunai had only stabbed his arm. Naruto flashed again, but this time to a more remote location, preparing himself for a battle he couldn't win, although he had a lot of speed and strength, the most powerful bloodline limit ever and the most feared assassination technique, in an upgraded version, he could at most delay him and hope for Takagi to arrive. Orochimaru didn't stay idle, but quickly flashed through hand seals and set earth release. Crushing earth wave and immediately a large wave of earth rose from the ground and proceeded to increase in size, and then it fell down to the ground beneath. With a big explosion an area of a few hundreds meters around Orochimaru was torn apart. Naruto had survived using Kamui and teleporting to a different dimension, but he knew he would be vulnerable when he returned, so he decided to make a big entrance. Orochimaru jumped and turned back when he felt a pressure gather behind his back, just like when Tobi decided to drop by, and he saw two different Naruto's running toward him and yelling wind release. Rasuriken and fire release. Spiraling Rasengan and when the two attacks converged they yelled collaboration technique flaming doom bringer dot. The giant flaming shuriken flew toward Orochimaru breaking the sound barrier and then collided, exploding into a massive dome of pure fiery destruction. Orochimaru felt a thrill run down his spine as he barely made a substitution jutsu with a nearby log, he would have used one a bit farther, but somehow there were none, work of the boy no doubt though Orochimaru as he felt the fiery backlash of the jutsu used by Naruto slam into him and almost incinerate him, but he would survive, he wouldn't fall to him no matter how powerful he was already. Only when he would get to the level of his father, only then would he give him the pleasure to actually free him of his earthly vessel. Clutching at his carbonized arm, his body littered with second and third degree burns, Orochimaru stood in the edge of the crater formed by the attack and broke down in a maniac laughter. Well, well it seems that you have inherited something more of your father other than look said Orochimaru. What can I say, kicking your ass runs in the family said Naruto as he prepared an almighty push dot. Indeed, but let's see how you handle this said Orochimaru as he shed his skin and came out of his own mouth in full health. You what? that's gross, but then considering your experiments this is normal for you said Naruto, as his eyes brimmed with pure power, ready to be unleashed. 
instead of answering Orochimaru lunged forward but was instead meet with two words that made his blood run cold almighty push, and an unstoppable wave of force slammed into him only for Orochimaru to turn into mud, and then he turned around in time to dodge a kick aimed at his head. How foolish of you to waste such a technique, now you will need five minutes before you will be capable of using it again, said Orochimaru as he flashed through hand seals, and said wind release. Razor arrow and what looked like an a transparent arrow of air headed for Naruto. That would be correct if I was not a true master of the Renengan, said Naruto with a smirk, and then he said almighty push and a massive gravitational force, negated the attack of the Sanin, and then slammed into him throwing him a few dozens meters away, and totally annihilating every tree in that distance. What Naruto said to Orochimaru was true, but that wasn't what he did, because for every use of the almighty push before a one minute cooldown, for someone that has a natural Renengan, its cost went up by 5%, and while he had chakra to burn he didn't have that much, instead he simply released only a fraction of the true power of the almighty push. Having anticipated such a move and then released the rest when the true Orochimaru tried to attack him. He saw the health bar of the sand and drop dangerously low and flash red. Such was the power of the almighty push used by a true heir of the Renengan, but he didn't let his guard down, and he was proven right when the snake Sanin shed his skin once more, and he noted that his chakra bar dropped by another 10% of his original chakra capacity. He was being pushed back, he knew it, but he wasn't going to give Orochimaru the pleasure of acting like a headless chicken. Naruto hated Orochimaru with every fiber of his being, he had killed his grandfather figure, and he had tried to destroy Kanahagakur even more times than just the invasion. He knew that from his father, or more exactly his father's tether to the mortal plane. Winato Namakas had been a man who did everything for a reason, but not even him anticipated that someone the level of Takagi, made of the remnants of his chakra a tether to allow him temporary respite from being in the Shinigami's stomach and allow him to impart his knowledge to his heir, that being the only reason he could use the Flying Thunder God at all. Orochimaru had once had the chance to have Minato as his pupil, but it passed him in favor of another team, one that had a so-called prodigy dot. During the third shinobi world war Orochimaru had come to regret missing the chance to shape him, as he showed himself as literally the greatest ninja ever produced from Konoha, and it was expected of him to achieve a level equal or surpassing that of the likes of Madara Ichiha or Hashirama Senju, and he would have had he not died in an effort to stop a fragment of the primordial. During the third shinobi world war Minato had waged a secret war against Orochimaru, denying him the Sharingan time and time again, and almost killing him several times, the only thing stopping him was the fact that he was one of the Sanin, and his death would have severe repercussions on the Morale Kanoha army and Orochimaru knew it. During this time Orochimaru arranged for Minato to meet his future rival, A and his brother Killer B, accompanied by another borderline s rank ninja from Kumo, in hopes of getting him killed, while eliminating serious threats against Kanoha and his future plans. The plan failed, and it ended with the ninja accompanying the future Rakage and his brother dead, while the Jinchuriki was seriously wounded and survived only thanks to his enhanced healing powers, while Lei was crippled from the battle and was unable of joining any battle for three months. That was the start of their rivalry. Upon his return he casually strolled in the village and foiled three different plots for Marachimaru to gain the Sharingan. As revenge Orochimaru sent him to assassinate the Tsuchikage, Anoki, using his success into defeating A and his team as a pretext. Minato again blew his plan by successfully infiltrating Iwa and fighting the Tsuchikage and his personal guard and whining. The battle was fierce as Anoki was quite powerful at the time, and the battle was joined by a great number of present Jounin, and even the two Iwa Jinchuriki, who had at the time just returned from a mission. He totally crushed them, 30 Jounin lost their lives, and 20 could never return to active duty again, the Jinchuriki beaten to a pulp and fell into a coma from which they didn't recover for a week despite their advance healing, as for the Tsuchikage, well there was a reason for his broken hip, being unable to heal even through Tsunade herself had tried to heal him. He left the Tsuchikage alive, in hopes he would understand that war was hopeless, but he didn't, in the end he learned it when he single-handedly killed a thousand Iwa ninja, and then casually blew up a heavily guarded bridge on his way home, after saving the remains of his genin team. Upon the end of the third shinobi world war, the secret war between him and Orochimaru and him, reached an all-time peak during the election for the fourth Hokage seat. Minato won, outsmarting him in front of all the Jounin Corporation. After that he proceeded to systematically destroy his labs and making the finding of test subject for his experiments nigh impossible. He made Danzo practically powerless and made an alliance between Danzo and Orochimaru impossible at the time. During that cold war between them, Orochimaru came to fear Minato even more than he could fear the third, although the later could easily defeat him in an all-out fight. That being the reason he didn't resurrect him during the invasion, although according to Minato, Orochimaru knew the Uzumaki secret technique for releasing souls from the stomach of the Shinigami. 
they feared him because unlike the other S ranks which came at you with their full power, wrecking as much havoc as they could on their way to you, Minato simply teleported behind you and jammed a kunai to the base of your neck, killing you without much fuss, and he never showed his full abilities, although nobody ever doubted that he could cause as much destruction as any other S rank. If not more due to his unparalleled mastery of seals, hence the reason he was given the honorary SS rank, a rank not given even to the likes of Hashirama Senju and Madara Cha. Arachimaru smiled before with a pulse of chakra, he deactivated a pair of seals and disappeared in a blur, and with a kick to the ribs, sent Naruto flying through the trees of the forest, but was disappointed to find it was just a reinforced clone. Naruto attacked with a combo of chakra-enhanced punched and kicks, combined with a perfect use of his LBL. 81, Body Flicker. Despite all of his effort Orochimaru simply blocked everything he threw at him, keeping at all times a creepy smile that sent chills down Naruto's spine. As Naruto retreated to recuperate some chakra, Orochimaru didn't miss a beat and took out Kusanagi, and with that he disappeared in a body flicker and appeared in front of Naruto, who was waiting for him as he saw the trail of chakra and proceeded to attack him with a speed and fury that he only witnessed from Takagi, although Takagi had been holding back a lot. Naruto began to understand why Orochimaru was one of the Sanin, a ninja that all but the most powerful cages feared, why at the age of 13, he had been capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hanzo the Salamander, a ninja whom only cages of the highest caliber could hope to defeat, albeit it was done with the aid of his team. Naruto was being pushed back and wasn't being done by some flashy jutsu or any earth-shattering secret technique, it was being done by a man and his sword, no jutsu being used. As Naruto avoided another swipe from Orochimaru he teleported behind his back and with chakra-enhanced speed, he jammed a kunai to the back of his head, only for Orochimaru to turn into mud. It was that moment that it hit him, Orochimaru was toying with him, a clone had almost killed him, and for all the resilience and strength of mud clones they had but a fragment of the skill and power of the original. Just like your dad, a kunai to the base of the neck, said Orochimaru looking at him with the ever-present creepy smile. Well he did teach me a few tricks said Naruto hoping to stall him long enough for Takagi to arrive. Liar spat Orochimaru his face contorting in rage as he attacked him, no one can speak to those within the stomach of the Shinigami, I've tried. I guess you aren't as good as you think, said Naruto nonchalantly even as he struggled against Orochimaru's assault, even in his enraged state, his swordplay and situational awareness was flawless. Puku, to think that you made me lose my composure, said Orochimaru slipping into his calmer attitude after giving Naruto a particularly nasty cut to his abdomen, which caused 500 damage and gave him a Kusanagi poison status, but in a second or two it would disappear, thanks to Kurama Dot. Well, Dad always said that you had a soft spot for him said Naruto, as he avoided the definitively deadlier sword swipes. So how did you do it? Asked Orochimaru increasing the intensity of his attacks. What was Chakra meant to do by the Sage of Six Paths? asked Naruto teleporting around him and a flurry of yellow flashes and giving him a few deep cuts that made his health bar drop to three quarters, damn he was resilient. How am I supposed to know that? That's unfair pouted Orochimaru as launched a volley of snakes toward Naruto, but his eyes gained a calculative look. Liar, Goku, you really do know your stuff, well pleasantries aside, where the hell did you find a large enough chakra sample to create such a connection to him? asked Orochimaru intrigued. That's for me to know and for you to duck said Naruto as a blur flew toward Orochimaru and he was slammed into the ground by an Asura Path enhanced clone. Orochimaru easily dispatched the Asura Path enhanced clone and then with a single hand seal, he unleashed wind release. Great breakthrough and sent an unprepared Naruto sailing through the trees of the surrounding forest or what was left of it anyway. Naruto felt his broken bones and he knew he had to do this if he wanted to survive long enough. But though he activated his three-tailed Kyuubi cloak and he felt his strength and speed increase by a factor of 20, although that didn't translate in his stats being multiplied by that number as your strength could grow a hundredfold and yet you gained only a few stat points. Using his newfound speed and strength, he attacked Rachimaru who for the first time in the fight took the defensive. Despite his enhanced speed and strength he found himself unable to breach through his defense, the snake Sanin was too damn agile for a hit to land on him, even though he was his superior in raw speed and strength terms. After a few minutes Naruto managed to pin Orochimaru to the ground and prepared to eviscerate him, but was rewarded with a seal to the gut. Naruto fell to the ground and on the way down he analyzed the seal, it wasn't like anything he knew, meaning it was a personalized seal. If he did have any time he could have easily picked it apart and undone it, but he was out of time so there was only one thing he could do. He did a few hand seals and whispered celestial release. Sky Guard eternal armor and was immediately wrapped in the azure armor just before the Kusanagi came down on his neck. The blade sank down to the middle of the ethereal armor's neck and even drew blood from Naruto. 
Naruto didn't stop there, but using his pre-top path, he drew from the natural energy of the land around him, and even Arasamaru stopped to stare at the transformation of the armor. The color of the armor changed to a deeper shade of azure, it also gained six azure wings, and all over the armor stripes of shining violet color spread into a mesmerizing pattern. Inside the armor Naruto felt his body grow even stronger than the normal sage mode allowed for, and his chakra mix with the nature energy and the celestial energy making up the armor. But the smirk he saw a table appear before him, time to seal destruction. 243 min. Another advantage of the celestial sage mode was that it destroyed any and all seals placed on him, upon its activation, well all, except for the seal imprisoning Kurama, since that was created by the death god. Orochimaru attacked with his maximum speed, but to Naruto it was like he was moving in slow motion, and he dodged, he couldn't afford to get hit by the Kusanagi, because it was a relic of his family and the age before the empire fell, and it could cut through almost everything, even his celestial sage mode armor. But the quick spin he turned around and punched Orochimaru in the gut, sending him flying through many trees before stopping. Before Orochimaru could touch the ground Naruto appeared above him and hit him with an axe kick, causing him to form a crater when he touched the ground. When Orochimaru got out of the crater he shed his skin once more and smiled before his body exploded in a pile of snakes, and from it a giant white snake with Orochimaru's face on it and holding Kusanagi in his mouth came out. But the speed that was a great deal greater than before he attacked Naruto and managed to score quite a few hits on his armor, leaving a few gashes that started to heal immediately after they were scored. For a few minutes the snake and the armored Naruto fought back and forth, but none gained the upper hand until Naruto's armor began to fade and Naruto fell to the ground exhausted. But the quick motion the snake hit Naruto with his tail and sent him flying, and when he touched the ground he formed a crater. The snake collected all the other smaller snakes, and it reformed back into the human form of Orochimaru. Brandishing his sword Orochimaru approached the prone form of Naruto. You pushed my ultimate form to its upper limits, now I won't be able to use it for another three months, said as he kicked Naruto do you know how much it hurts to gather that much natural energy in that form? A lot, apparently said Naruto laughing while spitting blood from his mouth. Why are you laughing? Ask a curious Orochimaru you're about to die. No, I'm not, you on the other hand are a dead man walking, said Naruto laughing. What are you saying? Asked Orochimaru trying to understand if he was bluffing or if was telling the truth. The celestial sage mode armor grants power surpassing that of the Renengan, although it does drain you of what stamina you have in the end, but the point is that I could have killed any time during our little fight, but I was asked to keep you alive, said Naruto. I who? Asked a troubled Orochimaru. By the man who has been watching us for the past two minutes and who is currently behind you said Naruto. Orochimaru made a quick turn and tried to swipe at Takagi, but he hit only empty air as Takagi ducked and then grabbed Orochimaru and threw him at a nearby tree, totally disintegrating it and a few other unfortunate trees standing in the way of Orochimaru's flight. Takagi disappeared in a blur and returned a few seconds later with a battered and bleeding Orochimaru. He let Orochimaru fall to the ground where he was bound by a few ethereal ropes and he approached Naruto. That was foolish of you using a power with such drawbacks said Takashi as he shared some of his energy with him which caused Naruto to be fully re-energized. Well, he blocked my connection to the furball and he was going to cut my head so sorry for trying to live said an irritated Naruto. That wouldn't have happened if you had become immortal said Takagi. That wouldn't if you had given me permission to kill him replied Naruto not missing a beat. I need to learn something from him and then according to what we learn we decide what to do explained Takagi. What do you need from him? To learn of his soulless experiments or how he planned the destruction of Konoha over and over again. Asked Naruto. I know what you feel, I too lost my family at a young age, so I can relate to your need for revenge, but we must not be ruled by emotions, I did that mistake once and I lost almost everything, said Takagi with sympathy in his voice. With a motion of his hand the body of Orochimaru floated in the air right before them and then Takagi spoke a string of words in a language lost to time and Orochimaru's eyes fluttered open. Naruto knew the spell, it made lying impossible, lying to yourself and to others, that spell was one of the ultimate intrusions to privacy, but he squashed those thoughts as he though the man before him deserved it. How did you escape my sensory powers, they were at their peak during my transformation? Asked a weary Rachimaru. I have my ways answered Takagi cryptically now tell me the truth, why did you arrange the invasion? Because I needed to give the old man. He forced himself to stop by biting his tongue off. Well this will be a bit harder than expected, but I have broken man's and demon's way more resistant than you, to my interrogation methods, said Takagi, as he focused his eyes on Orochimaru's eyes, and they glowed, and suddenly Orochimaru's eyes became a perfect replica of Takagi's eyes. You'll never get anything out of me replied Orochimaru almost breaking the connection between Takagi and him. I'm afraid that isn't the truth, and you'll see said Takagi as he focused even more, and then after a few minutes he interrupted the connection and said I see. 
You see nothing, all of you are blind answered Orochimaru. You did all of that as an act of mercy didn't you? Asked Akagi. Partially, but also because Konoha needed to be reminded of their decline since Minato was Hokage replied Orochimaru against his wish. But mercy, how could you consider killing Jiji as mercy? Ask a distressed Naruto on the verge of tears is this reminder worth a life of hundreds who died because you couldn't stand the fact that the village was strong, despite the fact that you weren't Hokage. Foolish boy, I don't think in terms of hundreds or thousand, but of millions that would have died if Kanoha showed any weakness, replied Orochimaru. Nobody is foolish enough to attack Kanoha, answered Naruto. Right now, that's true because my invasion showed that Kanoha was still the strongest and that it took two resurrected Hokage and me to defeat the old monkey, and even then I suffered crippling injuries, answered Orochimaru. That is unfortunately true, Hiruzen was dying because of a rare disease, something not even Tsune could heal, and that would have shown a moment of weakness to all, when he would be rotting in a bed, and then the fourth shinobi war would have begun sad to Kagi. That can't be true he must have planted those memories there, he can do that you know, said a tearful Naruto. There is no way he can deceive me, he is a few thousand years too young to do that answered Takagi, and Naruto knew that to be the truth, but still he couldn't accept it. Listen, Naruto, I see in you the potential to surpass your father, but to do that you must become a man not remain the boy that I now see before me. Do that and you will have the power to change the corruption and the disease that afflicts the shinobi world said Orochimaru. Next up, you worshipped, for lack of a better word, Minato Namias, why? And don't give the he outsmarted me bullshit said Takagi in a stern voice. He found a way to save the good in us all, to save the shinobi world from its own corruption, starting from the leaf, and he would have had he not died, sealing the nine tails said Orochimaru do you not see, he found a way to do so without first destroying it, but now it's too late, and it must first be destroyed and then rebuild to our image. Do you believe him? Asked Naruto. He can't lie, young one, it's hard to believe it, but it is the truth said Takagi. What are you going to do now? He turned to Orochimaru. I'm going to die replied Orochimaru. I mean if I let you go correct it to Kagi. I will proceed with my plan, but do you flatter yourself thinking I will reveal it to you said Orochimaru. Last question, why do you need the Sharingan, or more exactly its Majenkyo form said to Kagi. To set something or someone free but as to who that someone is I won't tell answered Orochimaru. No need to, I already know said to Kagi freeing him leave now before I change my mind. With those words Orochimaru disappeared in a body flicker and left Shion unconscious on the ground. The two moved toward the unconscious blonde, Naruto was conflicted about what he learned today. He couldn't believe Orochimaru was one of the good guys well more like Grey, but until a few minutes ago he believed he was pure evil, but right now his world had been turned upside down. He didn't know what he was planning, but he knew it was something even bigger than the Akatsuka's endgame, in fact he was sure that whatever the Akatsuka's endgame was, it would be but a part of this plan of his to destroy the shinobi world and the rebuild it, but he would be damned if he left his friends and loved ones perish because of his mad schemes. With newfound determination he moved toward the prone form of Xion. He decided that he would get stronger in every way that he could, and he would complete this mission and get the means to do so from Takagi. Orochimaru, your plan is not going to happen, of that I swear on everything I love for it is that what there is at stake. And so he totally ignored the new tabs that had appeared after the end of his battle with Orochimaru. Takagi saw the new fire burning in his eyes, and he smiled. Finally a new emperor was born and he was going to change the world, and he'd be damned if he didn't help him achieve his new goal, that had lit the fire in his eyes. With those thoughts in his head he undid the damage done to the forest during the fight between Naruto and Orochimaru with but a few words and then sat down and started to mediate. After his fight with Orochimaru, Naruto had picked up Shion's unconscious form and had left, knowing that Takagi wouldn't come with him. His mind was troubled with the knowledge he had gained a while back, he had known that the ninja world was full of secrets, and even the people he had known for a long time were not those they seemed, but still knowing Orochimaru's true motives for the attack on Konoha had turned his world upside down. He had also learned why Takagi though of Orochimaru as the most dangerous man in the entire continent, there were only two people that could outsmart him, one was Danzo Shimura, though he had no interest in fighting Orochimaru and couldn't as he was nowhere near the same level as Hiruzen, and his Sharingan arm was rigged to explode under certain conditions. The other being Minato Namikas, but being a botless entity trapped within the Shinigami stomach made it kind of hard to plan and or fight against Orochimaru. An hour later a few tables appeared before him, he opened them, apparently while he was lost in thought he had ignored them, and due to the hour per hour notification system his gamer ability worked on, he was re-notified now. Opening them, the first table that stuck was one saying. You have survived a battle with Orochimaru. You have gained. 1000000x. You forced a stalemate with Kakuzu and Haydn. You have gained 25000000x. You have unlocked bonus boss Kakuzu. Haydn. 
you have unlocked. The Emperor's Will 1 5th. The progenitor of the Will of Fire, when the Emperor decides to achieve a goal, there is nothing that will stop him from achieving it. From unlocking the Emperor's Will 1 5th, you have received Royal Jade Necklace. The Royal Jade Necklace Heir of the Will. There are only three necklaces like this one, one can only be worn by a full-fledged emperor, one can only be worn by the heir of his will, and by consequence his throne and the last one is worn by the emperor's closest advisor and protector, it gives plus 10 vitality, it decreases damage from divine and demonic attacks by 50% when equipped. You have unlocked trait. Protector one third. Your path lies in protecting others and you draw strength from this mission. Allows for the player to fight even if his health is 1 and gives a plus 30% chance to avoid or inflict critical damage while protecting someone. From unlocking Protector Trait 1 3rd, you have received Heavenly Touch Crystal. Created from the jewelers of the gods themselves, this crystal allows one to mark a person with its energy, and when that person is in danger, it teleports the holder of the crystal to the endangered person. It gives plus 3 wisdom and allows access to Heavenly Jump when equipped. Heavenly Jump. Type. Time space technique. Consumes. Zero CPSC when heavenly touch crystal is equipped. That allows for immediate transportation to a marked person once that person has an active mortal danger status. Congratulations you have leveled up plus 29 LVL. You are now LVL. 85, please distribute your newly gained 290 stat points, 870 attribute points, and 15 merit points. Status page said Naruto and before his eyes a new page was opened before his eyes. Naruto Uzumaki. Class. Gamer. LVL. 85. Points to next level 86.0001360.000. Age. 16. Height. 180 centimeters. Weight. 58.3 kilograms. HP. 14.700. Chakra points. 64.100. MP. 150.000. Paramas CP. HP regeneration. 80 horsepower sec. Paramas horsepower regen, 700 horsepower sec. Takra points regeneration. 2.000 CP sec. Paramas CP regen, CP sec. MP regen, 17.000. Energy, 131. Control, 100. Strength, 53. Speed, 115. Vitality, 91. Dexterity, 80. Intelligence, 151. Wisdom. 128. Luck. 100. Special status. Uzumaki and Namika's air plus 10 intelligence, plus 15 vitality, plus 10 speed plus, 30% xp and jutsu and technique creation, Jinchuriki, plus 100 horsepower, plus 100 CP for every new LVL. Trap master, plus 10% to traps and plus 10% to stealth. Stat points to allocate. 290. Wondering in what he should invest, he thought about investing more into wisdom, as it would help him understand jutsu, spells, rituals etc. Faster and easier in addition to helping him figure out Orochimaru's plan, but then he was reminded that he couldn't increase his stats without investing points into them, and how Orochimaru totally owned him with his speed during their battle, so that showed him that he was still hopelessly outmatched by some high-level ninja. When it came to the physical department so he decided to make a more even split. Naruto Uzumaki. Class. Gamer. LVL. 85. Points to next level 86.0001360.000. Age. 16. Height. 180 centimeters. Weight. 58.3 kilograms. HP. 20.700 plus 1310. Chakra points. 76.450. MP. 170.000. Paramas CP. HP regeneration. 114 horsepower sec plus 6. Paramas horsepower regen. 700 horsepower sec. Takra points regeneration. 2.389 CP sec. Paramas CP regen. CP sec. MP regen. 17.000. Energy. 151. Control. 120. Strength. 103. Speed. 165. Vitality. 151 plus 10. Dexterity. 100. Intelligence. 151. Wisdom. 178 plus 3. Luck. 120. Special status. Uzumaki and Namika's air plus 10 intelligence, plus 15 vitality, plus 10 speed plus, 30% xp and view and jutsu and technique creation, Jinchuriki, plus 100 horsepower, plus 100 CP for every new LVL. 
trap master, plus 10% to traps and plus 10% to stealth. Stat points to allocate. Zero. The tribute page said Naruto after he was done allocating his stat points, his body feeling a bit weird from his gamer ability changing his body according to his new stats. Elemental manipulation. Wind 300 300 sex 3. Fire 275 300 sex 2. Earth 180 300. Lightning 210 300. Water 150 300. Shape manipulation 100 100. Ninjutsu. Skill 180 250. Learning 200 250. Adaption 300 300. The Jutsu. Skill 150 250. Learning 250 250. Adaption 400 400. Ninjutsu. Skill 100 250. Detection 200 250. The Spelling 250 250. Learning 30 50. Adaption 70 70. Yuka Jutsu, skill with all ninja weapons. Skill 100 300. Learning 250 250. Adaption 300 300. Medical Ninjutsu. Skill 60 300. Learning 200 300. Adaption 100 100. Jutsu. Skill 80 100. Creativity 1000 1000. Complexity 1000 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up seal mastery. Decryption 1200 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up seal mastery. Earns. Skill 85 100. Creativity 1200 1200. Complexity 1500 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up rune mastery. Decryption 1700 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up rune mastery. Spellwork. Skill 300 500. Learning 250 250. Efficiency 50 300. Adaption 500 500. Sinjutsu. Skill 100 300. Weakness 300 900. Duration 500 2000. Balance 1000 1000. Adaption 400 1000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by the user discovering new ways of using Sinjutsu Chakra. Reningen. Skill 300 500. Path 7, can't invest points. Points are earned by the user discovering new paths through meditation and discovering new powers of the eyes in death or life situations. Hour 200 600. Adaption 1000 1000. Attribute points to allocate. 1170. Naruto normally wouldn't use attribute points, in fact this was his 39th level up that he didn't allocate any attribute points, as attributes were one of the few things he could actually train, rather than just invest points that he could gain through battle or cheating. In fact most of these two years had been spent with Takagi putting him through mental and physical training from hell, so to learn how to become independent from leveling up to become more powerful at least, when it came to attributes and doing some occasional missions, and one or two session of dungeon training, per year, to help him gain him some levels. They found he excelled in adaption, the capacity to adapt what you had learned to different tasks and situations, this skills weren't meant to solve, thus in two years he had maxed almost all adaption of his attributes, except for his senjutsu, in fact, he doubted he would ever max that out, as practically the uses of senjutsu chakra were infinite, screw would release. The power of a god could be truly found in senjutsu chakra. He initially was all about using his gift of the emperor to get another version of the gamer ability, one that allowed even stats to be increased through training but he was dissuaded by Takagi, who explained to him why the gamer ability was the way it was now. Apparently the former versions of the gamer had this feature, but gamers became obsessed with power and training, and sometimes they forgot to allocate stat points, which led to great numbers of gamers died because of such mistakes. But the most important reason was that this new way made sure that the gamers' muscles couldn't atrophy or their minds lose their edge because of old age, and the most important feature it made them immune to any mental disease or permanent mental damage. Plus that a gamer's stat points had an edge over normal people's stat points, for example if a gamer and a normal person had equal stat points and strength, the stronger of the two would be the gamer. Normal people's stat points work differently because when you used observe, their levels were direct indicators of how much battle experience they had, and not how many battles they had won or a true indicator of their strength. Their stat points were a reflection of their physical and mental capacities, and most often than not, it had nothing to do with their level, for example, Hashirama Senju by the age of 10 was a LVL.30, yet only his energy was 200, and his control was also 200, due to his wood release granting control equal to energy. No matter how high one's energy was, and that was without the need of investing stat points into control, by the age of 28, his energy was 1250. Minato Namakas was by the begging of the third ninja world war, at LVL. 
16, but his speed was 189, when the maximum speed a normal person can achieve naturally was 200. Their stat points could also be affected by age or mental state, depressed, euphoric etc., while gamers could be 200 and their stats had no minuses by their age. An example, here is in Saratobi in his old age, had an energy stat of 315, but he also had a minus of 160 because of his old age, while Takagi's current body was at the age of 150 years, old his body regenerated itself when he turned 180 years old, back to the age of 40, but his stats had no minuses from old age. As demonstrated by his earlier example, the gamer ability allowed for a gamer to easily overcome the human body's natural limits. Also their observe had been changed to calculate one's threat level, his was S rank, with his Renengan active, while he was only LVL. 56 when naturally S ranks were of the level 120 and up. When it was high enough it could also reveal their stats, but that was at times frustrating, so most gamers and cheaters never bothered to check them out, after all they had access to items that could easily make up for the rigidness of their stats. Observe in levels beyond 200 could easily reveal one's weakness, not that it didn't normally reveal weaknesses, but it had to be actively used on techniques and tojutsu stances for it to work. Either way, Naruto's use of observe was prodigious due to his natural ability to multitask, thus allowing him to make observe a weapon that granted him victory in most cases his battle with Orochimaru being an exception, as he switched styles and techniques too quickly, thus leaving him no room to create and deploy counters. Also his capacity to use merit points was greatly reduced to only be used to evolve his different attributes to their next stage, as to use it to gain bloodlines or other special abilities required supervisor's key, which was in Takagi's possession, the key being used by trainers as a final test for a gamer's personality. And he would use it when he though Naruto had advanced enough as the next logical step would be giving him full access to a gamer's special perks. Well that or if the situation became desperate enough that it left no choice but to give him access early on, but Takagi's LVL was high enough that it would take a full pantheon of gods to give him that much trouble. Snapping out of his reverie, Naruto finally decided to focus more on his chakra-based attributes as his oath on the emperor's honor prevented him from going against Takagi's order not to use mana spells or any other form of magic. The kind of oath he had sworn when he begun to train with him became automatically binding for an emperor's heir, and it gave no leeway to twist it or somehow changed and could only reverse to if the person you gave the oath to freed you from it on his own free will, that was why in the entire history of that world, that kind of oath had only been sworn five times, Naruto's oath included. Elemental Manipulation. Wind 300 300 x 3. Wind Storm 100 100 s. Fire 300 300 x 2. Lodurch, 75 100 s. Earth 183 hundredths. Lightning 210 three hundredths. Water 153 hundredths. Shape manipulation 100 one hundredths. Ninjutsu. Skill 182 hundredths. Learning 200 two hundredths. Adaption 300 three hundredths. The Jutsu. Skill 152 hundredths. Learning 252 hundredths. Adaption 400 four hundredths. Ninjutsu. Skill 100 two hundredths. Detection 250 250ths. The spelling 250 250ths. Learning 30 50ths. Adaption 70 70ths. Yukijutsu, skill with all ninja weapons. Skill 100 300ths. Learning 250 250ths. Adaption 300 300ths. Medical ninjutsu. Skill 260 300ths. Learning 200 300ths. Adaption 100 100ths. Fuinjutsu. Skill 100 100 100s. Creativity 1000 1000 s. Complexity 1000 2000 s. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up seal mastery. Decryption 1200 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up seal mastery. Earns. Skill 85 100 s. Creativity 1200 1200. Complexity 1500 2000. Can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up rune mastery. Decryption 1700 2000, can't invest points. Points are earned by leveling up rune mastery. Spellwork. Skill 300 500. Learning 250 250ths. Efficiency 53 100ths. Adaption 500 500 Sinjutsu. Skill 300 300 Weakness 500 900 Duration 500 2000 Balance 1000 1000 Adaption 400 1000 can't invest points. Points are earned by the user discovering new ways of using Senjutsu Chakra. Reningen. Skill 500 500s. Path 7, can't invest points. 
Points are earned by the user discovering new paths through meditation and discovering new powers of the eyes in death or life situations. Power 300 600 Adaption 1000 1000 Attribute points to allocate. 0. With his newly gained skills he could feel his chakra twisting until his two dominant chakra nature's evolution was over and his chakra returned to its normal state, but this time easier to manipulate it into his dominant chakra nature's. His eyes were itchy for a few seconds until the power boost they gained settled in, their semi-divine nature fighting against the human power that the gamer ability was and eventually losing. His chakra coils were rearranged to be more adapted to absorb and mix nature energy in great quantities. He took out his heavenly touch crystal and marked Xian, just in case they got separated somehow, the jolt of heavenly energy woke her up. With his new speed, Naruto made it past the border of the land of swamps in less than two hours, and in another half an hour, they were at the base of the mountain where the shrine, keeping Morio's body imprisoned, was located. The problem was that the entire mountain was surrounded by regiments of stone golems, and their perimeter was so tight it would take a small army to get through a Naruto using one of the most versatile abilities in his arsenal. Preparing himself mentally Naruto mentally said dungeon create. Biological tanks battlefield LVL.8 and then combined it with his animal path. The air around them was distorted like you were seeing a broken glass, however no noise or smoke came from it, and forward came 100 beings, some were giant lizards, some were weird animal hybrids, and some were beings that looked like they had straight from fairy tales, looking very fragile, but all of them had one thing in common, they had incredibly high vitality stats. Focusing on the body's endurance rather than on regeneration like most beings. Their combined mental might slammed against his mental walls with the force of a hurricane destroying most of them. His mindscape was on fire, the entire mountain was burning in a massive cloud of fire, as a hundred shadows stood in the sky overlooking the destruction and fueling it further by their willpower. The battle in a mindscape was a battle between beings that were literally omnipotent, as that mattered in there were willpower and thought, but the advantage was always on the defender, as the battle was being fraught on his own home turf, however this wasn't the case as having to fight over a hundred other beings, all with incredibly strong will of their own. It was practically a lost fight for all but those people with the strongest will. Naruto's will was unbreakable, but even that was being put to the test, as his normally indestructible resolve was dissolving, as was his mindscape. In a few minutes, the mountain was gone, all that was left were an endless void, Kurama's cage and a bright sphere of light representing Naruto's willpower. The intruders were represented by shapes made out of liquid darkness, however since the rules of logic didn't apply in a mindscape, they were quite visible as they were nearing the bright sphere, the sphere's light was getting dimmer and dimmer. Naruto couldn't fathom being defeated in a battle of wills, even his dark persona had accepted his own inferiority when compared to Naruto's willpower, right before they became one, and yet now he was being pushed back within the representation of his willpower. As he went deeper and deeper in the sphere of light, he began feeling something different from the normal warmth and invigorating effect that being inside one's own willpower gave, in the form of a feeling of invincibility. Not like the feeling one got when he used narcotics or was under the effect of a jinjutsu, but something primordial within oneself that assured him that he wouldn't be defeated not within his mindscape, not even outside it, he recognized it quickly, it was the power of the emperor's will, the willpower that helped his ancestors stand against gods. Primordials and all other sorts of beings that eluded human comprehension and laugh in their face as they grabbed victory against all odds. The newfound power within him obeyed him with eagerness to show the intruders that they were facing a scion of the house Atsutsuki, a being that would not bow in the face of gods, let alone some upstart beings that were more beast than rational beings. With an explosion of light, the sphere expanded, in its wake the mindscape was being reformed anew. The form of the intruders were retreating quickly, their instincts alerting them of the presence of the power that went beyond them, the potential of mankind made reality. In the real world only seconds had passed as Naruto's eyes shot open, his Renengan glowing in the Hisemi darkness that the shade of the forest provided, all the summoned beings' eyes shot open too, the Renengan reflected on their eyes. Adjusting to the newly added field of vision, he mentally ordered them to attack the stone golems as he gestured for Xian to hop on his back. As his summoned army crashed against the golem army, his gamer ability opened a new tab in front of him. You have unlocked. The Emperor's will two-fifths. The progenitor of the will of fire, when the emperor decides to achieve a goal, there is nothing that will stop him from achieving it. From unlocking the emperor's will two-fifths, you have received Cryptex. Cryptex, the empire's black box. The secret archive of all the secrets of the emperors and the empire, it also contains the journals of all the eight emperors before the fall. 
It grants a permanent plus 20 intelligence and plus 25 wisdom, also allows access to secret archive, note, if the cryptex is lost and or stolen the access is lost, and if a non-emperor heir has the cryptex, access to the archive and stats boosts are not accessible, furthermore all individual that steal this scroll, automatically gain permanent insanity or brain death, according to their luck stats. The effects from this item are activated whether the item is equipped or not, ownership is enough. This baffled Naruto, the stat boost for this item were too low for the importance and the sheer power that the item held, even in his inventory, he could feel the power radiating like a massive beacon. He could get the jade necklace's effects, after all, it was more of an item designed to represent station and to serve as a irrefutable proof of one identity, the other effects were side effects of being near such power as the power of hundreds of gamers and magic user of all kind that were housed within the imperial court. The cryptex was another matter altogether. It was an item built to withstand powers beyond human comprehension, it held secrets of the Emperor's own power, it held copies of the Emperor's journals, and quite possibly their personal grimoires, whose value was immense even to the most powerful gods, putting this irregularity in the probe to Kagi later list. Naruto dodged a punch from a stone golem, trying to take his head off, and split it in two with a strike of his wind-enhanced kunai, the extra power of the wind storm, making even a kunai, a weapon of mass destruction, in his hands. Naruto jumped over the split golem, and using sheer wind manipulation, he propelled himself higher toward the place where the shrine was situated. Once landing there, Shion ran toward the shrine as two stone golems run toward him. Cursing under his breath, Naruto dodged the very slow attacks of the golems, thanking his stars that Moria wasn't fully awake, or they would have been as fast as any Jonin. With a single hand seal he unleashed a wind release. Great breakthrough while a shadow clone, he created while dodging, unleashed a fire release. Spiraling Dragon, the collaboration jutsu turning the stone golems into molten rock. His evolved nature transformations made the jutsu cost less and make more damage, while he had used a collaboration jutsu of two evolved nature transformation and had put a higher amount of chakra than what was needed to produce an average effect, the effect of that particular combination was quite destructive. The jutsu being quite flashy for a proper ninja, but then again he wasn't a proper ninja. Turning around he saw a man enter the barrier Shion had erected around the shrine. In a burst of speed he tried to grab the man, but with a burst of semi-demonic chakra, the man propelled himself through the barrier, his body dying but from him, Moria was released, and the demon refused with his old body, the land around them turning volcanic as the demon was returned back to his full power. He just hoped that Moria was the typical overconfident demon and didn't summon his golem army, they would be a pain in the ass to get rid of. Taking out 50 senbin he launched them in the air, intending to mark the entire place with his version of the flying thunder god, but the demon destroyed them with a stream of dark chakra. Cursing under his breath, Naruto speed toward Xion, Ho was frozen at the sight of the demon. Hello, little priestess, I hope you had as much fun as you could all this years, cause you're going to die right now, said the demon laughing as he launched one of his tentacles. No yelled Naruto as he used his heavenly jump to appear in front of Xion and take a tentacle to the chest before he could do anything to mitigate the damage. Naruto screamed Xion as she saw Naruto's body hit the ground, his eyes becoming glassy. This can't be the end said Naruto as his mind rebelled to the very thought of dying. Kurama's chakra rushed his system, trying to save him, but not even Kurama could heal a disintegrated heart. No, I won't die here shouted Naruto within this mindscape as the entire mountain shook and the cave of the Rinnegan lit up, sending a column of purple light toward the mindscape sky. Finding himself outside of his mindscape, he saw as time itself was warped by his will and power, the Rinnegan glowing with the immense power it was channelizing. Turning back to the moment when he intercepted the hit from the demon, Naruto used his wind release to deflect the tentacle as much as he could, he would have tried to grind it away with wind blades, but it was too close, and he could harm himself even more than the tentacle could. Before his eyes a new table appeared, time stopping as the gamer was automatically put on pause, since he was in the middle of a battle. You have unlocked. Reningen. The Broken Path. The power over time itself, it allows one's chakra to mix with the time flow and then push oneself backwards or forward, though the chakra cost of doing the latter ensures immediate death. The name derivates from the fact that when going back in time, you break an entire timeline. However this can also refer to the fact that this path allows one to ascend once the physical body is nearing death, allowing him or her to break free of the mortal chains. Type. Time manipulation. Consumes. 4000 CP sec. You have unlocked. Protector two-thirds. From unlocking protector trait two-thirds, you have received thundering trench coat. Thundering trench coat. This trench coat has been imbued with powerful enchantments to allow one to achieve higher speeds than any human is capable of achieving. It gives plus 40 speed and plus 10 vitality when equipped. 
Time retuned to normal as he fell to the ground, his body flooded with pain as he struggled to remain conscious and equip the thundering trench coat, as he did that he felt relief at the extra vitality and regeneration. Kurama was busy at work to heal him even faster, between the two he would be fine in a minute or two, until then he should avoid getting hit anymore. Blurring through hand seals, he set Earth release. Tortoise shell and a massive dome of Earth rose around them, just in time for four tentacles to slam against it. Gritting his teeth, Naruto took out a seal in which he had stored chakra for emergency situations and absorbed it all, the seal kept a good 50.000 CP, and with that he was almost near his full capacity again. A few hand seals later, his hands lit up with green medical chakra as he used the mystical palm technique to accelerate his already fast healing capacities. Seeing the light, Xian approached the downed Naruto and gasped as she saw what remained of his wound. Oh my gods are you okay? Asked Xian seeing the rapidly closing wound. Yeah, Peachy, just give me a few seconds till I catch my breath and I'll return to kicking the puny little demon's ass, said Naruto with a feral grin, his red eyes and enlarged canines, making it even more striking. You don't look that good to me, said Xian. I've seen worse, said Naruto as he stood up, his health bar already beyond half. Liar, said Xian. I've had a hand encased in lighting almost pierce my heart, replied Naruto, deciding not to mention that he was almost dead, but he turned back time, and that's how he survived. Then I do something to help. Asked Xian as the dome above them started to crack. Just stay away from the demon and let me do my job, said Naruto before disappearing in a blur of speed. Naruto laughed as he moved around at speeds that were frankly inhuman, not even his father had been that fast, at his prime, he had had a speed stat of 201, his mastery of seals allowing him to slightly surpass his body's limits. Dodging at the attacks of various tentacles that were hell-bent on finishing what they started earlier, he threw a three-pronged kunai toward the demon's head, and once it was near enough he teleported atop of the demon's head, and with a touch of his palms, an highly explosive seal array was formed, out of thin chakra. And then he teleported away exploding the demon's head and a good number of tentacles. The damage was regenerated within a few seconds, and with a roar of rage, Morio sent dozens of his tentacles toward Naruto, who avoided them with his newfound speed, before launching another three-pronged kunai toward Morio's head. This time the demon destroyed it with a blast of dark chakra, but the moment the kunai was destroyed, the seal on it glowed with a blue light, before a giant blue orb appeared between the demon and Naruto. The demon's body moved toward the giant blue sphere, it pull being too strong even for the demon to resist it, and soon its body was fully sealed within the orb. Told you he was puny said Naruto with a grin. Naruto watch out screamed Xian as the sphere holding Morio broke away and from it dozens of tentacles headed toward Naruto's back. Acting on instinct, Naruto body flickered away just in time as three tentacles hit the ground where he stood a moment ago. The emotion that Xian felt seeing Naruto almost die caused the seal her mother had placed upon her to break away, unlocking her special chakra. With her new power Xian headed toward Morio intending to sacrifice herself in a massive explosion of her special chakra, taking Morio down with her. As she prepared herself to do that, Naruto appeared beside her in a flash of yellow light, grabbing her hand before flashing away. What do you think you're doing asked Naruto. Destroying Morio replied Xian it is my duty as priestess, nobody else can. We'll do this together said Naruto forming a Rasengan in his right hand. How, all your techniques are useless? Asked Xian. Fueled only by my chakra, yes, add your chakra to the equation, and you got one big Morio ass kicker Rasengan on your hands, said Naruto. Really? Asked Xian disbelievingly. Yes, now push you damn chakra in here, said Naruto, moving his Rasengan toward her. Obeying, Xian pushed her chakra in the Rasengan, causing it to change in color and grow in size, partially because of her chakra and partially because Naruto pushed more of his in the mix. In a flash they were teleported right above Morio's head and slammed the new Rasengan in his head, causing a massive explosion that completely obliterated Morio's body and spirit, the holy chakra Xian, having a highly destructive effect on the demon's energies and physical form. The backlash from Morio's destruction turned the mountain in which they were standing into a volcano. Naruto teleported them outside, at the base of the mountain, where his summons were standing still, awaiting further orders, as the golems had ceased to function once Morio was destroyed. With a pulse of chakra the beings disappeared, his instant dungeon disappearing as well. After doing that Naruto sat down on a nearby tree stump, his regeneration wasn't fully finished, and his chakra reserves were near depletion again. One demon down, good work Pratt said Naruto with a grin. I'm not a Pratt, you little blonde. Trailed off Xian not finding a proper name to call Naruto. Demon suggested Naruto smiling. You're impossible said Xian sitting near to him. I know but if I wasn't then I wouldn't be me replied Naruto. You're wrong said Xian. About what? Asked Naruto. 
Moryo isn't truly destroyed, this form yes, but he'll reform again and try to destroy the world again, said Xian wistfully, and I need to continue the line of priestess that will continue to suppress Moryo and demons like him, will you help me in doing so? Gladly but I'm afraid that we can't have a relationship said Naruto laughing, not one that will work either way. Why? Asked Xian. Because I am an S rank, one who possesses the legendary Renengan, I'll be forced to marry many women, and even if I only married one, I would still have to have children with many women, to produce as many children that can inherit my potential, and my bloodline of course explained Naruto. But can't you choose, I mean you're very strong, the strongest ninja I have ever met? Asked Xian. Nope, even the likes of Hashirama Senju and Madara Cheha didn't have a choice replied Naruto, omitting the part in which all emperors were forced to have a small harem, seeing as they rarely produced any children, in fact the most fertile emperor was the fourth and he had four children, and that guy had 80 wives and concubines. I'm not good at sharing said Xiang. None is replied Naruto still we can remain friends, I'll drop by time after time to have a chat. I'd like that said Xiang. Good, now Takagi stop spying and come down here said Naruto to the forest behind their backs. You have gotten better commented Takagi ready for another heavenly transportation. No, I have marked the palace with flying thunder god marker, so no luck in making me vomit this time, answered Naruto sticking his tongue out to Takagi. Stats at the end of this chapter, exp gained from defeating Moryo not included, 